YouTube. You guys have been asking for a survival challenge with the wooded beardsman, and there he is. Here we are doing a survival challenge, minimal equipment. I'll explain some details as we go along, uh, but we're out for three days, two nights, and we are starting with um, hitting up some berries. Uh, I thought we were picking them and bringing them with us, but I think Chris is just bringing them in his stomach. Uh, anyway, what we're doing, <laughs> you might have eaten as I go. Yeah. You might have seen me come up here uh, in another video uh, where I saw a lot of ruffed grouse feasting on, I thought, on raspberries. So we came up to pick some raspberries and we're looking for choke cherries. So choke cherries, pound for pound, um, have uh, just about the most calories that you can get from berries. Um, the trouble is that they're not super palatable, so it's hard to eat them in quantity unless you um juice them or crush them all down and make fruit leather which we may or may not do because we have minimal equipment uh, but we're going to be on the water we're going to be fishing we're going to be foraging we're going to be cooking we're going to be tarp camping so follow along tracks through the clover here i think all kinds of things have been out in the field eating we had a uh Pretty cold start this morning. It was only five degrees Celsius at my house when I got up, uh, which is pretty cool for this time of year. And especially considering that um, it's supposed to be 27 degrees Celsius later this afternoon. So we're getting quite the temperature swing. And uh, it looks like maybe we're a little bit late for Raspberries, there are not, not very many still hanging on. And what we lack in raspberries, we should be able to make up for in uh, choke cherries when we find a good choke cherry tree. Because of that uh, big temperature swing, the dew came down really hard last night and it's still early enough that it hasn't uh, hasn't dried up so that means that we're getting soaking wet walking through here unfortunately um, evening primrose it's a little bit early to harvest the seeds obviously but um, we can eat these flowers these are yummy and they have a good oil in them they're tasty I always look inside to see if there's a bug before I bite and down the hatch it goes. First meal of the day. It's not a meal. Hmm. Actually, there's quite a few of those here, so maybe we'll get a big handful. There's another wild food. Um, so these are these are a type of oh, there's a wild food. A little cricket did cook that guy up. Um, sorrel, sorrel leaves. They got that funny spear shape, so you can uh, eat those. I just don't want to eat too many because I think uh, I get too much oxalic acid. But they're tasty. Yeah, if we want to put a whole salad together. Like, we can um, stew the daisy greens and the yarrow. You can stew up as a pot herb the yarrow leaves. Yeah. Yeah, it's all medicine. So the, what you want to get are the, the um, younger leaves. So not necessarily the ones that are attached to these flowering stalks. But... These ones down low. So, if we want to, we can put together a big salad. What are you doing with these daisies here? Daisy greens. Might as well throw some of those in there too. Let's pick, uh, let's do like two cups of these. Yeah? Well, yeah, we'll have a proper, like a proper fried salad with all this stuff. We're gonna fry it? Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah, these, these greens are always better cooked. Here. Yeah? 
Oh yeah, yeah. Throw that guy in there. Mm. Perfect in the salad if he doesn't jump out. <laughs> Red clover. What I'm gonna do, just to be expedient, is I'll throw them in their pot and then I'll just pick the um, flowers off of them later and then discard the greens. Oh, we got the makings for a, uh, our greens anyway, so we're going to carry on and look for uh, choke cherries and then get into some fishing, setting up our campsite. Got no tent on this trip. Um, kind of was doing a, like a 10 item trip and about half my items are my sleep setup. Uh, so I'll show you I got tarp, sleeping bag, air mattress, mosquito net, and a ground sheet. Pretty pretty comfy, eh, for a survival challenge. Well, here's some of the choke cherries we've been looking for. Usually when they're ready, you can just strip them off with a very small amount of stems following along. Kind of ideally want to get them without stems so see if we can get a whole bunch of them here there's, there's a few good shrubs of them anyway i don't know that they're like perfectly right but they're probably okay yeah they're tasty just picking i have a cup in my car so chris has got the big can so we will just merge them all together and uh, we'll have some choke cherries for later. So remember season one of the Wilderness Living Challenge? We tried to eat choke cherries like we tried to eat a kilogram of choke cherries. <laughs> I think we did actually eat a choke cherry kilogram. <laughs> it wasn't easy. No, I had a bug in mine. Get out of there. I'm mostly trying to pick them without the stems. Yeah, your mouth kind of gets uh, weird after a few handfuls. Then you can hardly tell if you're chewing them or not. They're like falling out of your mouth from the astringency. But when we made the choke cherry leather, and I made some in the big wild year by grinding down the pits, that was good. That was like a big treat for me in the big wild year. And the nice thing about them is um, you can pick them pretty fast. Probably they're the fastest picking berry that we have in this area. Would you say? Or Saskatoon, if you can find them. The, there's another name for those. Yeah, sugar plums. Uh, those are a service lot, berry. A lot more bang for your buck, I think. Not as much seed. If you find a good bush. Yeah, or, they're, pin, or pin cherries they're too. They're tastier. Right? Well, pin cherries have a pretty big pit. They're just like, they're easier to eat. Yeah. Right? They're, they're not as bitter. They make a nice juice though, pin cherries. Yeah. Um, I was out for a run the other day and I saw that the robins and the blue jays were in the choke cherry bushes like crazy, huh. just feasting. Um, but I think. Uh, birds are actually after the pits for the nutrition more than they're after the fruits. Yeah, I would agree on that one. And I think when you um, when you make the leather, when you grind down the pits like into a paste, and then make leather with it, you're getting probably way way more nutrition, which would actually be super interesting to uh, do a little nutritional study of the berries with and without the pits. Yeah, I bet there's a lot of oils in the pit. Yeah. And more protein. Like any seed. Mm hmm uh, Are we gonna are we aiming to fill that uh, pot? <laughs> How much patience do you have? Oh for picking berries I got all kinds of patience. We're we're almost almost breaching half. Okay, that's all right. We can do, we can do that then. 
the time we boil it down and take the pits out, are we going to take the pits out and crush them and eat them? Um, yeah, I don't know if we're just going to like crush them and then drink, well, we could just crush. pour the juice off and then like mm. anybody who's interested too can just like eat mush and spit seeds. Yeah, I think if we crushed it, boiled it, and then just ate it. Although you did have a problem with that one time, I remember. Yeah. Right? When you had a poop. Uh, that, that was scary. <laughs> that was when we ate uh, lynx. Oh. <laughs> and, and choke you, cherries. And you had choke cherries and you crushed them with a rock, but some of the pits were still big. And uh, one cut me on the way out. <laughs> and, uh, and so I was actually like, I had like an internal bleed, so I had like diarrhea, blood poop. <laughs> Like a quantity of blood that you never want to have come out that end of you. Thought you had butt cancer. I didn't know what I had, but then I, I figured out, like on thinking it over, um, that it was a, a cut from a cherry pit. I, um, of course, my family doctor knows all about the kinds of things I do, so he immediately got me to do a parasite test to see if I had parasites, which um, came back negative. No parasites. That's the weirdest news you ever got. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you had to place bets on who of everybody you know for sure had some gut parasites. That's after eating porcupine and raccoon. Yeah. Would I be on that list? Would I be on the top of that list? Probably. But everything's pretty well cooked. Ooh, there's some, uh, did you get into the hawthorns yet? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, the, yeah. Not, they have, they don't have berries on them, but they got the thorns. Which are pretty ouchy. Okay, I'm gonna go back around to the other side. There's some good ones over there. Yeah. We're just gonna pick until we, uh, fill this bucket anyway. There we go. That's a lot of berries. I might need that space to put the canoe down. You know, one of these days, somebody's gonna offer us a lighter canoe. <laughs> one day. I saw some little baby bass here too. Here we are. Look at these blue skies. What are those? Two female mergansers. Two dinners. Yeah, two dinners. Dinner for two. Yeah, so we're on my favorite series of lakes. Spot where Chris and I have spent some time before. You've seen us here hunting and you've seen us here fishing and sometimes you've seen us hunting and fishing but this time it's just a fishing and foraging trip just no hunting so we just got to get across this lake and then we'll be into the of the river part I always find this piece of river very pretty you gotta watch for all the deadheads And the leaners. Oh, we're almost at the second lake now, up the river. And we are at the confluence of two rivers. So there's a smaller river on the right-hand side that comes in and meets the main river here, which, which is, uh, 
this was Canada's transnational uh, or national transnational highway at one time when the dominant form of transportation was canoe this is a very old well used travel route so I think although I have yet to find anything super interesting you can find interesting stuff along here do you want to uh, do you want to have a peek at this smaller river or do you want to go get get our campsite set up uh, I'll have a look yeah? yeah you think we'll find anything uh, I don't know we might we might find elderberry um, I noticed there's a little bit of the um, arrowhead uh, like the duck potato growing along the river yeah, we've never tried that have we no I've never been able to find it with the um, actual potatoes on it really I don't know if I'm just picking it in the wrong season or well, it's a fall fall right yeah I have found the potato okay well there's a whole patch of it beside us there oh, we can hit that on the way back okay. um, yeah. Those won't be ready? No, yeah, the high bush cranberry. I don't know if you'll be able to see that to the left there? here, but uh, it's more high bush cranberry. That than that bush? Uh, oh, yeah, there is a little bit of choke tree hanging over the river. Really? Yeah. Are we gonna get under that, or what's the deal here? Slide, I think. Duck real low. Yet. Yeah. Speaking American? Yeah. Portage. Portage. Let's. Oh, we definitely do because the one behind is too low to go under and too high to go over. We can go over there. Yeah, but the next, look at the next log. And we can't get past the next one. Even if we get under this one. How far, how much further do we gotta go? Uh, no more further. It's, it's around the next, uh, two more corners actually. Maybe. Yeah, too much, too much work to get around these trees for, for the possible reward. So we're gonna go get our campsite and uh, and then get to some fishing and we'll try I know a couple spots where we can catch crayfish I think over there so we'll give that a try we're at our first portage pretty little spot uh, and I want to take you over to have a peek at these cardinal flowers I haven't really seen them anywhere else except here before there they are cardinal flowers they are very pretty and they certainly add a splash of color along an otherwise very green shoreline here. Anyway, this is the base of the portage. I was going to take the uh, canoe first, but then I thought uh, maybe I'll walk it with a backpack first and check for obstacles. That way I've got my um, axe with me if anything needs to get cut out of the way. I don't feel super organized about this. Got uh, two bags, paddle, and my life jacket. Kind of was reminiscing about when we were in Red Lake on that nine day adventure, which was super awesome with Red Lake Outfitters. And uh, we used their canoe which was so light that I could have my backpack, my life jacket, two paddles and a fishing rod and that canoe all in one go. But I can't really do that with this Novacraft canoe. It's, um, it's a big, heavy plastic canoe and it's kind of shallow. So when the yoke is on my shoulders and it pinches in a way that makes me a little bit sick um, sometimes the top of the canoe is pushing on the button on the top of my 
my beautiful uh, Wesley Bow Guides hat. So I gotta be careful about how I carry it, otherwise um, I gotta take a break part way. This length of portage is almost about as far a portage as I can do with that canoe, which is, I don't know if it's, maybe it's a little bit over 100 meters. I guess I could step count it on the way back when I'm not chit-chatting. Just carried the canoe back, sorry, over. I saw some mushrooms. There they are. Let's get you looking at mushrooms. Black chanterelles. Black chanterelles. Okay, here's one of my 10 items. I brought a multi-tool because I couldn't quite decide about a knife and I definitely wanted a pair of pliers for uh, getting the um, hooks out of pike if needed so that's the knife I have to work with for the next couple of days There's not a lot of these but um, they're just the fact that they're here is a good sign that I'm gonna get into some mushrooms later. Maybe have a big feast of them. I don't know if Chris will eat them or not, but um, another one of my items is that I brought butter because it just makes cooking so much easier when you have a little bit of uh, cooking fat with you. So I've got butter and mushrooms and hopefully some fish. Here are more and more and more of the black trumpets pretty sure that they're associated with this big white pine tree so when i find them i usually find them under red oaks in our area or red pines all right multi-tool knife Mm, those ones are a little bit bit a little bit bitten let's get these ones they're in better shape trim those bottoms off of them and because of their funnel shape when i uh, clean them i also always open them up because things fall in or crawl in the funnel and then are down in the stem part so it's good to have a little check for those guys. Is there fish in here? Uh, yep. Yeah. Whole bunch of them. Whole bunch, huh? All right, let's see what we can make happen. Oh. You wanna flip that uh, rope and that bail can in? Yeah. Let's see Go. That's French for or else. <laughs> There's our spot. Just get all of our stuff unloaded and it's not a great spot for tying up a canoe, but we'll just tie it to a tree there at some point. So here's our spot. Some of the standard stuff that you might find at a out of the way camping site. Nice big fire pit and some makeshift benches or fish cleaning stations. Old fire grills. Uh, I'm not sure where we're going to set up our tents yet. But uh, over here, it's very rocky around here so there are limited, limited prime tenting spots. Um, this is probably one of them. Nice flattish mossy spot here that would work. Um, the nice thing here is you can fish right off the rock. Catch rock bass and smallmouth bass and pike. Probably at some point we'll hear some bullfrogs along here. Which... Uh, 
There's a wood duck. Uh, what was I saying? Bullfrogs, I think they opened on the 15th of August, so can maybe do a little bit of bullfrogging. There's uh, some little winter greens. They're not ripe though. Ooh, winter green flowers. You can eat those. Yummy. I'm gonna eat one of those. Freshen the breath. Got an old uh, shotgun shell here. Garbage. One of my uh, 10 items. Catered in, catted in bag filter, which has been kind of a mixed success for us in the past, I would say, this bag filter. Sometimes it's worked beautifully, and then other times it has not worked, and I figured out what the problem was with it, and... Um, the problem is it's not a platypus. <laughs> oh. The platypus is way better. The only problem is, oh, and you could probably see right now, there's like, I got a couple of balsam needles in the uh, spout here and so what happened is uh, when you push the hose in it wasn't making the right connection that's what happened there Get all these black chanterelles out of my pocket before they get sweaty. Got a, got a handful here anyway. And once we have a fish or two, could probably take some time to go find more mushrooms. Should be, should be other ones to pick anyway. There. Okay, so you said fishing kit counts as one item, right? Yeah, fishing set. Fishing set. Uh, oh, those are my Princess Auto work gloves, because you should always have work gloves when you're camping. Keep your hands clean and protected. Um, so these are like a probably like a medium duty. I've done a lot with these and they're holding up, so that's been good. Uh, I also thought that I had, hmm, somewhere, I also have a fish glove. Uh, anyway, here's, I'll find it when I have to fillet some fish. Here's my fishing kit, so just kind of uh, a mix of different things. Um, I didn't really sort this kit, it's, it's even got some old junk that I found. Um, when we were salmon fishing on the Ganaraska River, I was picking up old uh, hooks and sinkers. So I'm going to try and sort through some of that. But for pike and bass, I've had really good luck with this um, Cyclops. Uh, this um, blue and white works. I mean, it's got bent hooks on it though. The red and white, you can't really go wrong with that. Um, and then a couple of uh, diving baits. So I've got a couple of smaller hooks too in case we get after perch and sunfish so we'll, we'll just see what's biting today and if i run out you're unboxing some uh 
mystery tackle box yeah. stuff, right? MTB. MTB. So no shortage of no shortage of lures. Oh yeah, that should be that should be enough to get me through a little bit of fishing anyway. Still fishing the five of diamonds. Yeah. Yeah, for now. Well, in that case, I am going to fish with the six of diamonds. <laughs> Lots of stuff to try if you want to take through the mystery tackle box. Okay, I'm first thing going to try my classic. Oh, and there, I didn't even see it in here. The maps, Black Fury. This So this combo has been really good to me in these lakes in this area. The Black Fury and the Cyclops. I'm gonna try the Cyclops first. They both catch pike and bass for me. So give this a go. I think it's a bass. Whoa! Did you? Woo, did you guys see that? <laughs> oh, I just about hooked Chris. <laughs> you lost him that time. Ah. Okay, we letting that one go? Yeah, we can let that one okay, go. Okay, well, there you go, guys. We're on the board. Now we're tempting fate. <laughs> oh, it's a good one, too. Yeah? Okay. You got her? I think so. Don't oh, stay down. It's a better one. Oh, hey. right in the net. <laughs> There we hey. go. <laughs> There's one. There's one. The rod tips up. That or we're snagged. We might be snagged. We are snagged. Oh. <laughs> All right. So I've brought four to the boat and landed one. It's not very big, but um, for the number that I'm landing, I think we need to keep it to eat it. Oh, you got the stringer, eh? Can I just pass them over to you? Back on dry land. It's gonna be time to get organized about some supper and about some more more water. All right, let's get organized. This. Put this away before I lose track of it. That's the case for the water filter. Here's one of my items. Oops. There. That's where that goes. Is that where I had that? I think so. Yeah, Wetterling's axe. My Princess Auto gloves. Go set up a sleeping spot and show you some of my other items. I'm gonna go back to this mossy spot that I scoped out earlier. Kind of close to the water. I'm not not really sure if I need the tarp and the mosquito net, but I'm thinking if I don't set them up that's when I'll end up with a problem with rain or with bugs so I'm gonna set it up I'll let you um, follow along here as I figure out how I'm gonna rig up my Spot. So one of my items is, I think this is a 12 by 14 maybe, or a 10 by 12. Another item is a ground sheet um, and my uh, thermarest pad or my sleeping pad. And then another item is rope. So instead of bringing um, 
you know, like a paracord. I just brought my whole rope collection, which is lots of lots of little pieces of rope. So just use what I need from here. Well, I'll be invisible from the sky. Everybody's looking for me. Well, definitely no more parts than we're going to need. Alright, so I'm going to do a bowline on the corner of my tarp. So, put a little loop in my line, through, behind, and then you can put your whole piece back through that loop again, or what I like to do is just to tuck an ear in, and then pull that tight. So now I have a slippery bowline, so this isn't going to go anywhere, but when I'm done uh, and I want to take it down, I can just pull that tail and now my knot is undone. So again, just quickly make a little loop in, around behind, loops around behind, put an ear through, and there we go. Now this crummy tree here, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be strong enough to hold my tarp without falling over. Um, what I might do is retie a longer sh rope on here and go to that live cedar tree after. So, just um, I'm going to do a what's this one called? Taut line hitch, um, which is a knot that you can slide back and forth to tighten or loosen the line. I'll show you that one close up in a minute. So we've got that one over there. This one I'm gonna go to that tree, so I need a piece of rope that is more than six feet long. So this one should do it. I'm gonna do a slippery, slippery bowline again. So pay attention. So I'm gonna bring my rope through the eye. And I'm gonna make make a little loop. I'm gonna go in behind, and then I'm just gonna put an ear, pull it tight. So it's not going to go anywhere, but when I'm done, I can just pull this tail end and that whole knot's going to come out. Okay. I want to come over to this tree. Okay, and then I want to make my um, taut line hitch. That's not on camera. Put it down lower here for you. Making a loop. Now I'm going to wrap it around my main line, the loop. Okay, so I got this little ear up here, and I got my tail down here, and you can put the whole tail through that loop where my finger is, or as I did with my slippery bowline, I'm just going to put an ear through, and then we'll cinch that up a little bit. Okay, so now it's, um, it's slippery. I can just pull this, and the whole thing is going to come apart, and if I want to tighten this up it'll tighten but then it won't loosen the other way there's too much friction with all these wraps raise this up a little bit I think I need a pretty long one so I think this one is going to be the ticket should reach um, I'm going to do a slippery bow line again. So, make a little loop. 
go in around behind and then pull a little ear through cinch it up it's not going anywhere it's a good knot and this one i'm gonna have to run pretty far over because i don't have anything close by that's sturdy enough to tie to just barely long enough so I'm, I don't really have enough to uh, make my taut line hitch knot so I'm just going to tie it off I'm going to do my last corner but the um, back corner is going over to that dead balsam Not the closest one, but the next one, the next one back. So, taut line hitch, sorry, slippery bow line onto the corner of my so, tarp. It's sturdy enough, I think, for, for what I want to do. Um, I'm going to make my, it's going to want to move in the wind a lot, I think. Hopefully, hopefully it's not too windy. Okay. Now, I'm going to center my ground sheet underneath here on this mossy spot. There's a piece of, uh, that looks like tackle box plastic. I got no stumps, no rocks, and rest. Okay, this is a Sea to Summit mosquito box net. Um, I've used this traveling internationally with um, peel and stick wall hooks that are removable super super handy you can just put four of those around your resort room and then hang this over your bed mosquitoes don't get at you uh, i've also used it on quite a few camping trips when i am tentless as i am now um, so it's just like a super lightweight uh, quick to set up mosquito net and this one's a double so you can fit, fit two people under it and it already has its um, ropes come with it. Just have to sort out which end is the long end and which end is the narrow end. That's the narrow end. So one quick way to do this is to tie it right off to my tarp corners. Um, the nice thing about this that is one of the nice things it's actually a super design um, you can peg out the bottom corners so that's really handy third corner on the taut line hitch I can just slide ow I burnt my finger pulling that rope Let's just slide the rope along try that without burning finger all right so now I want to sleep mosquito free I just go inside my little that space here and I can see everything around me really nice visibility uh, but the bugs can't cannot get at me if I'm really worried about them I can tuck this all the way under around uh, if I have to get up in the night and pee or whatever out I go 
Easy peasy. I'm not gonna bother staking out the corners. I don't think that's necessary in this case. And I'm gonna put this back in my sack so I don't lose track of it. Ooh, with my, my cheat item is in here. I brought, I brought some instant coffee because uh, I might get a headache if I don't drink coffee tomorrow, so. Just being proactive. It's not really to your expectations. So we'll push it all the way to the bathroom. You can probably grab some more rocks. I don't know if gonna spill. split. Going around it Maybe perfect. not with this axe. Um, I don't think so. I have to work pretty hard to get smaller pieces off of this. Oh. Right. I'm gonna just go cut some dry wood because uh, yeah, that wood sucks. I'm going on a little wood cutting adventure and then we're going to mess around with that filter because I don't think it's going to make water as fast as I drink it and um, it's 27 degrees out, we're active, paddling all day, walking around all the time, here I am and uh I need that water to work. Okay. We want, ideally, a dead sugar maple sapling that just, just couldn't survive the understory. I don't see any of those. So, we're going to cut up some of whatever that is. Which I will identify. Oh, maybe that is sugar maple. Let's see. Um, if you don't have one of these saws, you should definitely get one because they are super duper handy for any of this kind of stuff. I think this is a sugar maple. So this is this big piece that's lying down but I don't know if it's solid or not. So that's nice and dry. That's nice and dry. That's pretty dry. And that one's good. There's no shortage of uh, dead balsams and spruces which is okay in a pinch and is great if you just want to have a fire to hang out at but if you want to cook then you want some dry hardwood or as I've discovered recently um, dried hemlock bark if, if there was a dead hemlock tree I would be taking my axe to that This end that's been touching the ground is soft, rotten. So we're gonna saw off a couple pieces. Seems pretty good there. So we'll just carry these back. Fold this up so we don't hurt ourselves.
folds nice and flat. Actually, I'm going to carry these back. Then I'm going to come right back here and we're going to check to see how solid this bigger piece of maple is. Because if that's solid, that'll be all the firewood we need. I'm back. Okay. a little more solid. There, that dry maple firewood's already making a big difference, so should have some coals ready for cooking pretty soon. Chris is down at the lake there. I hear him scaling fish, working away. And we have that little handful of the black chanterelles. We have those pot herbs that we were collecting. I just have to pick the clover petals off the clover heads, and then we have. A pretty sizable pot of choke cherries. However, I haven't eaten yet today and I'm at 8,800 steps, 2,500 calories burnt. So, hard to get caught up on those. There, I just ended up cutting those even finer, stacking them up, so they're burning a little bit better now. We should have a good bed of coals there, maybe maybe in 15 or 20 minutes, and we can start cooking our feast. Oh, you, uh... Yeah. There, the site 
had a uh, great so we're gonna make the most of it mushrooms first eh? and then once they're thoroughly cooked we will add our mixed greens on top which suddenly looks like so much less than when we picked them now that I'm super hungry so I usually um, pull these apart just to make sure there's nothing hiding in the middle like that there's a little slug there right so we don't want to eat those slugs just check them there's another thing it's bush food so it's not sterile that's for sure Just picking them apart. I uh, recently made a very nice chanterelle quiche with yellow chanterelles and black chanterelles that I found at my family camp. So I've already kind of done this picking through mushrooms this week. I'd like to go for a big walk tomorrow and pick a whole bunch more if I can, but we we might get caught up in the fishing. So we'll see. We'll see what the day brings us anyway. Pick, 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 pick. Good, good, good. Okay. I guess uh, we don't have a butter knife, eh? Is that? Butter, butter oh, you, stick. oh, you made a butter stick? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Bush, All right. Push cross from that one. Oh, wow. I love how it slices through the butter. This is a really nice butter stick. It can maybe double as a stir stick. You know, try and keep the handle over where it might be a little bit cool. I didn't bring a cooking glove, but I do have my... Um, Oh, we have these work gloves. Oh, those will work. They don't work well. Well, we can double them up. Yeah. You just okay. use it as a pot handle. Okay. Or, I don't know what that means. Salad course. Yeah, we'll a little bit more. probably pulled the stems off of those um, <laughs> what is that those are the yellow stems uh -huh. so when we're eating them just pull the bottom two or three inches off because they'll probably be pretty stringy
so so. Ooh, it's hot there. Ooh, all right. How's that look for uh, half and half? Close. Good. Close enough. Yep. So. Oh. Stewed salad. Stewed or fried? Fried salad. Fried salad. It's like a. Ooh, like fried spinach. The fruits are super hot, they'll burn you. Okay. Put some Bordeaux in it yet? Uh, no, it's really good. It's good by um, itself? Yeah. One of your 10 items, was it cutlery? Hmm. <laughs> no. Nope. I'm trying to find something nearby. Hmm. The arrow are pretty stringy, but they are also really tasty. That's my that, side. That's your side? Yeah. Oh, well, that's convenient. That's on the, Close near, to me. the near side. Yeah. <laughs> I can smell the berries, that's for sure. It's good. I love it. Um, like, it's, you got to pick through it because it's a little bit stringy, but I would pick more of the leaf ends of the arrow next time. Yeah, well, that's probably the only part that's stringy is the arrow. Mm -hmm. The daisy greens are really good. The um, raspberries give it a really nice flavor. Yeah, it's good. I like it. It's like a very aggressive fried spinach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's surprisingly good. I forgot there's a trick with the, um, it's called like shattered greens. If you put things like yarrow into hot butter, they cook crispy and then you can eat them and they're like crunchy, crunchy. and fat and, mm. um, these almost did that. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, I think you could probably serve that at a restaurant. Yep. But you'd have to warn people that it's a little chewy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's different. I like it, but it's different. Mm -hmm. so it's got all the the woodiness that you would expect from a wild plant. Mm -hmm. So you have to the do, fibrousness? do a little bit of work to chew it. Mm -hmm. mm, that's really good. We um, should have picked about five times that. <laughs> yeah, I cooked down to nothing. But like, that's like any green when you cook like a spinach mm -hmm. and put a whole bag in there and it ends up with a handful mm -hmm. all the moisture cooks out yeah that's good i'm ready for round two i'm gonna finish this though yeah and then we'll cook fish fish okay yeah and i should say that um part of my rations i brought corn cakes mm -hmm. are you gonna have a corn cake i might do that you might do it yeah just this massive flour. All I've had today is coffee, so. Mm hmm. We knew we. You're, e you're eating my side now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but it looks so yummy. We knew we wouldn't be getting any kind of carb, and we, we got to go for three days. It's pretty uh, aggressive. Mm hmm. We know how it turns out. I was going to say, we've done this before. Mm hmm. Oh, that's hot. Mm. It's the berries. Mm. That's really hot. But also really good. Mm -hmm. Really good. And what I said before with my mouthful was we've done this before without carbs and mm -hmm. we know how it ends up. Mm -hmm. So this time of year I think it's more about um, putting our knowledge to the test. Expertise, yeah. wisdom, wisdom even. And making You were wise and you brought corn cakes. That's right. Because we knew how this was going to turn out. I just put enough, just enough lake water to kind of cover them over. And we'll let them start to simmer. I guess we're going to have to throw some more dry firewood in there too, right? Eh? Yeah. You're cooking fish? 
Okay, I'm gonna go cut some more firewood while you're cooking fish, and then uh, if anybody wants to see fish getting cooked, they can <laughs> head over to your channel. <laughs> You're making a plate? Yeah. Well, I just made some utensils. There you go. There's teamwork. Oops. Cut my plate short. Uh oh. It wasn't quite what I imagined, but there's a pretty clean fish plate. Sure. Sure, I'm gonna have a little taste test while you're uh, Messing around with the fire. Are you cooking some biscuits? Chris brought some, brought some uh, cornmeal biscuit mix that he made. So, got some 
Mm. Crunchy tails. Pretty good. It's good. Yep. Nice. The adobo is good. I feel like it's got just the right amount of salt. Yeah. You took the small one too. Or did you check? I just took the nearest one. Yeah. Right through your frame every time. Ah, ruined my whole video. Yep. One more time. Yeah, this is really tasty and uh, it's like blackened. Mm hmm. Okay. I appreciate the effort you took to scale them too. <laughs> I haven't found a scale yet. Because the skin's tasty. Yeah. And I haven't found a scale yet. Well, that's, I don't know if I would, uh, don't hold me to that. No, there's always a few slip by, right? But Yeah. No, that's good. And if there's bones in there, that's your fault, because I didn't take any of the bones out. <laughs> I found a scale, but it was stuck to my finger. Yeah. I'm sure there's a couple of scales in there. I would be surprised if there wasn't. All right. But I did do my best. I'll give you a peek at the uh, cornbread cooking over here. Do you, <laughs> excuse me, do you need more fire under there? Yeah. I should cook at a high temp. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It likes higher temperatures. Plus we need it for this thing too. Yeah, even, we gotta get... Hasn't even boiled yet. No. <clears throat> Chris did a really nice job on those two bass that he had on the stringer, but he forgot this little guy in the net. So... While he's cooking up the last um, corn biscuit, just gonna do a cleaning job on this fish. A couple minutes ago, a big snapping turtle came and poked his head up. Probably, probably is clued into the fish guts and the scales on the rocks and is looking for his share as the lake's top scavenger probably I don't know too many people that scale fish around here it's kind of a not a thing because um, people tend not to eat the uh, fish skin that tends not to be a part that people eat and I think the uh, guidelines from the um, Ontario Ministry would say that you should not eat the fatty parts of the fish because of the risk of mercury contamination mostly but other pesticides and herbicides um, as well oh yeah the side does not want to scale as well and the scales are going everywhere I hate when that happens scaled a lot of fish in the big wild year which was my um, one year of wild food eating. Um, ate a lot of fish skin and 
fish eyeballs and fish stomachs but um, also was monitoring my uh, blood mercury levels during that time and they increased tenfold so I already was like my starting mercury was borderline um, at the kind of the recommended maximum and then um, over the course of about the next six or seven months the levels went up to ten times over uh, which is quite a bit and then um, they started to peter out through the year now I did just get a uh, an updated blood mercury test done which um, you know it's been uh, a year and a half since the big wild year and they are now very very low and I also have not been eating a lot of um, wild fish really in the past year and a half I tend to eat a fair amount of wild food but I just haven't really been out fishing as much as I uh, normally do and I guess that's part of it the fish head for catfish bait I guess we'll cut off these pectorals nobody wants to eat those or this last gill bone whatever it's called you see that big pile of bubbles just out past the clouds reflection in the water kind of right there that's from the turtle making its escape stirred up the bottom so what was happening when I was messing with my water filter you're mushing up the cherry juice and cooking more cornbread yep making uh, survival jam that one's stuck on there pretty good. I'll let it cook a little more. Survival jam, eh? Yep. Put it on your cornbread. Needs more uh, firewood under there. Maybe it was just a frog. I saw the pickerel weed moving here. If I thought it was the turtle sneaking in. Well, I don't see anything. Well, our fire did quite go out while we were gone. We just went out to um, fill up Chris's water bottle and have a little fish, but we did not have a little luck. Let's see if we can bring this back to life. I wonder if the fish glove 
makes a good fire glove, I would think not. I don't want to melt it. If I'm very, very patient, it's going to make a little bit of water. A little over a third. You hear that? That's your bullfrog you were looking for. Where is it? <laughs> yeah. In the lake somewhere. Well, why did it wait till we get back from it? It's too smart. It knows your reputation. How much is uh, gone? Of the liquid, yeah. That's why. Yeah, we need to top it up and... Yeah, I would, I would top it up and let it boil down again. It's only going to just release more of the sugars out of everything and yeah. break the uh, skins down. I wonder if we um, find a good, clean, bigger stick to just mash them. really mash them. I think no matter what you do, you still have to have more water. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just going to caramelize all the time. I think that fish didn't cook yet. Get some, get some fire going. I've just about lost the light. It's getting dark for the camera. Just trying to cook this last fish. Eat it up, brush my teeth, go to bed. There it is. Little bass. <coughs> <clears throat> Reminds me of cooking all those perch during the Wilderness Living Challenge. We just had them all lined up on the grill. Anyway, I just charged my light up before we came out. This is the Olight Peron 2 headlamp, which is super handy. Try and mush up some of these chill cherries. I'm making lots of lots of juice. We'll just let this fire go out though, eh? Hmm? You don't have a plan about keeping this fire going? My plan is to make sure all my stuff is where it will not have the dew settle on it. And I'm going to brush my teeth. Put my gloves over by my tent. I'll show you my, my final setup. Here it all is. So I've got just um, my dry bag. I'm not going to put my fish glove in there. I'm going to put it on my trapper's bag. I'm going to put my gloves in my dry bag. Have my axe beside my trapper bag. I brought a vest for in the morning in case it's cool out. But um, tonight it's going to be my basically my pillowcase over top of my life jacket got a down sleeping bag but again like it's gonna be too hot mostly to use it I thought about just sleeping in my pants but I think my pants are too grubby to go inside my sleeping bag so I'll strip out of them almost almost time for a new pair of fjall ravens I uh, put these ones through the paces for about the last five or Six years, starting to starting to wear out a little bit at the ankles, and uh, ripped a couple seams. Had a rip on the edge here <coughs> that my mom patched for me, but um, they're still good. They still got some life left in them. I see a few mosquitoes around, so I'm pretty happy that uh, that mosquito net is one of my 
one of my 10 items. Anyway, it is nine o'clock. It has been a 12,000 step day. And according to Fitbit, I've burned 3,252 calories so far today. Just to give you an idea of energy expenditure. Anyway, um, I'm gonna set the camera up just outside my tent in case anything interesting happens in the night, but I uh, expect that we're gonna go to bed pretty soon and uh, we'll check in in the morning. Pretty morning. It's kind of just raining just hard enough that I can't quite decide if I want to get out and fish or not. It's uh, probably been up since about 5.30. I don't know what time it is right now, but there's also a lot of mosquitoes. Oh, it's only six, quarter past six. Well, I haven't really uh, heard too much activity on the lake. Not a lot of fish jumping anyway. Couple bullfrogs in the night, and a big orange light went by earlier. I think it was a helicopter. It looked a little out of place. Anyway, <gasps> kept uh, dry under here, and um, I seem to. Seemed to work out all right. I didn't sleep great. Do I look like I just woke up? Didn't sleep great, but I slept. Um, it's really hard to manage my temperature too. I've got a down sleeping bag, so if I was out of it, I was too cold, but when I was in it, I was too warm, and then it's hard to be half in half out and um, just have your temperature managed so anyway we'll see what the see what the day brings uh, what's gonna be my coffee this morning instant coffee and a greasy frying pan There's already a mosquito in here. Should come up to a boil pretty fast because it's got a lot of surface area for the amount of volume. And good to the last drop. This is pretty old instant coffee, but uh, it'll do the trick. Well, it's boiling on that side, so that's good enough. I don't know what my volume is. Let's put in that much coffee for that volume of water. it around with this buttery stick. Oh, it could be a buttered coffee. Maybe this is a, uh, maybe this is campfire bulletproof coffee. <whistles> Probably all this hot water is just releasing all the fish flavor from the pan. This might be the worst cup of coffee I'll ever have. Yeah, I'm gonna butter this coffee. It's tricky with only 10 items. Because I normally would bring a little coffee mug with me, which doesn't really take up a lot of weight, but keeps 
coffee out of my water bottle. I'll try that amount. Let's see if we can pour this without making a big old mess. Oh yeah, that's a big old mess. Probably, probably the worst cup of coffee that I've had. I uh, didn't expect water to be my challenge on this trip, um, but it has been. So, because there is something amiss with my filtering system, uh, I have not been able to keep up on my water. I used a precious amount of it for that really awful coffee so we're gonna go refill <clears throat> look at this pretty lake this morning uh huh it's so calm i'm gonna go and uh, catch a pile of fish hopefully and the one thing i definitely want to do today is to pick a pile of wild mushrooms and then maybe put some greens together for another stewed greens because that was a really nice way to start supper last night. A lot of weight on there. Yes, if I could catch enough of these sunfish, that'd be a meal. Well, I guess at that rate, maybe I'll have a drink at lunch. Drip. So, we're going to go for a big fish. We might also go over to the other lake upstream from here. They're actually... Um, it kind of forks. You can go to two different lakes upstream from here. And uh, one of them's got a whole bunch of pike. And the other one has a whole bunch of pike. So we can choose between a pike lake and a pike lake. And uh, see what happens. Just going to get the canoe loaded up. I still want to have some time to pick mushrooms and greens today so hopefully hopefully we can fit that in canoe still some mist on the lake so I guess the water is pretty warm relative to the air temperature I decided to wear my vest since it makes a pretty good pillow I didn't really want it lying around in the fish slime and the sand of the canoe so um, it's cooler today, so it's, you know, 
it's not uh, uncomfortable to wear it. And actually this life jacket design gives you a lot of free movement, so it's not in the way when you're fishing or anything. It's all good. So, uh, what did I do? I caught a perch and a sunfish. I let them both go. We're gonna go out and we're gonna try and catch something bigger on this lake or on the next lake or on the other next lake. So, here we go. Going that far? Yeah, maybe. I'm gonna go hide under the cedar tree here. Because after we get wet today, it looks like we're gonna stay wet with the overcast skies. Want you run to? Yep. Well, there we go, perfect umbrella. We'll just uh, wait out the rain. Hello. Yeah, there's like bands of it, eh? And then like kind of bluish sky and then another gray band. When I woke up this morning and it was raining, I, um, I checked my phone. I looked at the weather forecast and it was like 12%. 12%, 12% through the day. So here it is. There's our 12%. Um, the forecast for tomorrow is about the same, like 12%. So I guess we're in for a few showers, which is not the end of the world, but um, you don't really want to get wet. All my stuff was damp when I put it on this morning. Was yours too? Yeah. Yeah. It was all sweaty from yesterday and then nothing dries out in the night when uh, like the dew comes down, like the, the humidity was high enough, I think. So, um, Chris finished cooking up all the choke cherries this morning so that can be part of lunch or supper later. And uh, our mission is to be successful fishing and then I might try and do mushroom walk if we catch fish early enough on that I can get out and do that. Oh look a little more rain and we're under another cedar umbrella but this spot has led us to some food. I don't know if you can see it and I don't know if you can see that one. We're, we're actually not going to eat that one but there's a uh, Oh, come on, focus. There's a frog there. A green frog. But here is some lunch for Chris. Snail. Yeah. <clears throat> Remember when we ate so many of them? Oh, yeah, we did eat these. Lost it. You lost it? Ah, sorry, lost it. Ah. Uh. Well, we do have some other food. I did um, I did catch a bass, which I normally would throw back, this little-ish guy, but uh, based on our luck so far, it's a keeper. <laughs> Everything's a keeper. Yeah. Not having much luck in this lake. No. So we'll wait out this little bit of rain, and then um, we'll have a peek at the river mouth, and then look at doing the portage yeah. up to the next one. There's probably a fish here. Yeah, in the mouth. It's a yeah. good feeding spot for yeah. the fish. Alright. The mouth. Let's see let's see if we have any good luck here.
Another snag bottom. Big stick. Sploosh. Thank you. Who's track? Yeah. Let's catch one. Just have a little uh, check the portage trail going up to the next lake. A lot of roots on it. I'll just make sure nothing's falling down on the path. And got a couple of old bush campsites we could have a peek at maybe while we're back here. I don't know if they have survived the test of time because they're a few years old now. But we might as well have a look. I didn't even know if I'd be able to spot it, but uh, there's a branch or a log and a log and a log and a log. It makes a square. Um, I did one time camp out here on a uh, balsam bough bed with a tarp over top. So that was pretty cool. I thought I might see more mushrooms than I'm actually seeing. Just not a good spot, maybe. But uh, an ex-girlfriend and I made part of a bushcraft camp as much as we could get done on a trip out here one time. I think it's just up ahead, so we'll have a look and see if it um, see if this one held together. Is obviously uh, a little more elaborate than that last one I showed you which was just a frame a frame of small logs to hold a bed of boughs together really oh, it was harder to find than I thought uh, what happened a tree fell on it for one thing broke the broke the crossbar here nice um, nice old fire ring and I had um, covered up a bunch of firewood and birch bark under this old slab of bark and it looks like it is bone dry. That worked out pretty well. And there's still a solid sleeping platform. It's all held together because we tied the ends down so that keeps all the middle ones kind of in place. So that's pretty cool. And then um, between like the four different trees you can hang a tarp over this pretty easily so this was the spot this was the bushcraft camp well, that fire pit i remember it being a lot of work we even carried gravel over here it's got a gravel base underneath pretty cool i'll go back and check on the portage trail chris is probably wondering where the heck i've gotten to it is still raining Unfortunately, there's some other uh, oh, loons calling. Just, uh, just moose tracks on this portage so far. Oh, there's a couple people prints, people prints, and moose prints. Or maybe, uh, maybe somebody was taking their moose for a walk. I really love how cobbled this part of the river is and shallow and just kind of breaks over the cobble here and chick -chick 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 -chick. it's really pretty um, seems like this is the end of the portage I guess people are only coming this far getting their feet wet but then paddling out to the lake um, I don't really see that the trail goes past here so oh no because there's the sign so that's doable we can uh, we can get it get the canoe up this far not 
not super excited about carrying the canoe again, but that's how you get from lake to lake. So, I guess we're going to do a lift. Rocks are pointy. Yeah, that's what I did the yeah. <laughs> I got my pants wet before I could roll them. I guess it's not the end of the world. Did you step on any clams yet? Mm -hmm. Empty one. Hey? Empty one. Oh, yeah. I think we can probably paddle down this after. I don't think we have to portage back. We might hit a few rocks, but... What's the... Oh, I'm still in the... What's the point in having a big plastic boat if you can't whack a few rocks with it? Hey? Eh? Yep. Yeah, cool the feet down a bit. No. All right. This is. See what this lake will do. Hopefully, it's a pike mecca, as it has been in the past. It's a very small lake. It's interesting that this piece here is like super cobbly, eh? And none of the rest of it has been. This is where that big whitefish run is every year. They come up this stretch of river in the fall. I have not timed it yet. But I'd like to. You want it in the boat? Yeah, well beside I guess. That's yep. a, a pounder, but it's bigger than yesterday. Well, that's a, that's a good thing. He's uh, barely hooked there too right now. There it is. What about the, uh, what about we do this? Get a wild food thumbnail shot. Huh? I realized what my problem was the whole time we've been fishing up till now. I, uh, I had my boots on the whole time. <laughs> now, I'm the barefoot fisherman. Let's see if I have any luck. Oh, did you just miss a bite? Oh, there's one. 
That's a pike. Yep. Uh, yeah, what I tell you, barefoot. This is an eater pike. We're done, we got supper. We can go back now. He doesn't like the boat. Nice. Nice pike. That's a good size one. Yeah, we can eat that. Okay, now, what's my, what's my plan here? Is the spinner's the trick back here, I think. I wonder. I wonder if there's something to it. Okay, um, I'm just gonna get this ready. You okay to hold them for a minute? Yeah. And... <clears throat> you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna glove it. Yeah. No, no fish love without the fish glove. Also, I didn't really want my fish glove in my bag stewing all day. What do you want? The whole net? Just, uh, no, just pass me that fish. Oh, you can't lift it up any higher. You're going to get that up in the base. Okay. Thank you. Whoa, slimy. Now, I think, I think that spinner is like down in his, down in his guts almost. So what we're gonna do, so we don't mess this up, is we'll stringer him right away. Anyway, I'll do this off camera. You know what I'm doing this weedy pike back. Let's see. Ooh. Ooh. A little more fighting now that he's back out of the water here. Yeah, that's how you, that's how you hook a finger wrestling with pike. Put the glove back on. Yeah. The one. Oh, the bass and he spit it. Oh. Nope. Yeah, he did. He spit it. Darn it. <laughs> There's another one. Another one for the stringer. I think, uh, I think we're eating tonight. Yeah. That means that I have time to pick mushrooms. Yeah. To add to our feast. Well, uh, Chris, Chris caught a pike, so now we have two pike, three bass, which is our meat for the day. So we're going to head back, and we're going to try and ride over all that cobble that I showed you, and in that weir that I showed you, that was built into the river with those bigger boulders. Um, it's a little bit fast, but it's pretty shallow, so I don't think we can tip the canoe, but we might bounce a couple rocks. Um, so we'll see what happens. That was a big splash, eh? Right up there? It was. Yeah, right off the weeds. That's where I caught the first one today. We might try a couple casts at oh, the... Oh, a fish. Oh, or a weed. I missed him. No, that was a fish. I did not commit to it. Yeah, so we... Even though we have all of our meat, we can't help but keep fishing. <laughs> Huge bass! Look at the bend on that rod, Jer. Yeah. I got a glimpse of him down there. Oh, the... shit. You know, tangle him up with the other fish. I know, I can't or... do anything with him. My <laughs> line is too tight, too. It's like I got to get the drag off a little bit. This is a absolute pig of a bass. Have you ever seen a bass peel line like that, Jer? Uh, oh. Not here before. Oh. Look at the size of him, eh? It is a pig. Absolute Beauty. pig. 
Oh, you're gonna bring up a lot of salad with that. I glass. have no choice. Here he is. Here, here he is. Oh nope. Just give me a second. Yeah. I'll call it. I'll call you when he's ready. Okay. Uh, right now. Go 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 go. What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there that it is. is a massive bass. Yeah, man. Holy. <laughs> I think you got the lure figured out for this this lake. <laughs> oh my god! Look at that pig. Yeah. That is an absolute. Look at it. Yeah, he's beast a slab. A fish. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> that is an absolute pig. <laughs> Anybody in the US is going to be like, you're freaking out over that? Yeah, yeah. But for here, for, here, for this little nice, pond, nice is an fish. absolute pig. <laughs> Probably some of the pike are scared of that guy. Uh oh, we got to watch. We're going down the river here. Yeah. You got your pliers handy, Jerry? Yeah. Was this the right move or yeah. what to come back to this lake? Yeah. And it's just a little pond, but look at all those fish that came <laughs> out of here. <laughs> that is a slab of fish. Look, that pike beats the bass, or the bass beats the pike, I think, meat-wise. Maybe. It's going to be better eating for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. We're good. Try not to lose them on a rock. Oh, yeah. Well, they should be secure, but I don't think they're going anywhere in a bundle like that. Oh. Yeah, we'll just pick them all up at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, somewhere. So you're thinking we're gonna ride out the middle here? Yeah. And we're not gonna hit bottom, maybe. Yeah, we're gonna hit, we're gonna scrape. As long as we don't uh, get wedged and flipped, we'll be good. <laughs> but this will save us a lot of work in the, on the portage. We get bottom, a little bit of bottom. Is it turbulence? No, we're hitting bottom the whole way. The whole way. It's pretty okay. shallow. That was the hardest part. I bet you there's a fish in here. Yeah. Some no. little bass. Well, yeah, it's a little shallow, I guess, eh? It's nice and bouldery, though. Yeah. There's probably some smaller fish hanging out in here. If it was colder water system, there'd be trout in here, but it's, uh, it's a warm water system. I was um, saying on my camera earlier, because of that whitefish run here, Yeah. you'll notice up ahead somebody's kind of built the boulders into a, into a weir, like to trap to funnel the fish oh and um in the bush i found a big old wire frame of a fish trap i think they basically just set it in the weir and probably put chicken wire around it or something huh that sounds illegal well this, you know <laughs> it looked like it might have been from the 50s or the 60s or the 70s or who knows when right oh i see so did you scope up this uh, little riffle here no <laughs> no uh, I mean, yep, it goes rock, 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 <laughs> water, rock. Have you ever tipped a canoe before? I have. <laughs> uh, All right, well, you want me to scope a line, I guess, right? Be ready to back paddle if I can't make a decision. Okay. <laughs> we're going to take that little V right, right between those right. two rocks. Yeah, and then we're going to go right to the left of that boulder. Yeah, okay. We can't go head on, we're gonna hit this boulder first. Okay, we gotta, we'll, we'll go slow. We gotta, we're gonna hit this one. Oh, I see. Go straight. What if we take that other little V to the left? I don't know if we'll make oh. it there. So, and this is that weird, Chris, to the left of us. You see how the boulders are all lined up there? Okay. Yeah. And then it's deepened out a bit. Gotcha. Okay, we can go straight here, and okay. then we gotta go left afterwards. Okay. If you go slow enough, you won't get pushed backwards, which is what, <laughs> where you get into big trouble. Because there's a lot of power here, so just make sure we don't spin, Jerry. Yeah. If you can help it. I don't know that we can get too much speed when we're scraping over so many rocks. <laughs> I'm going to take us to the left of that little bald rock. Oh, and I think we'll squeeze between that and the one next to it. And then we're into like a little bit of deeper water. Right there. Yep. So I have uh, tipped the canoe too. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, it's not fun. We no. went in head first into a boulder, got pinned sideways, and oh, then yeah. washed over. Yeah, I saw that happen to some people when I took my canoe course. 
and we're gonna have to go to the right here, Jeff. Yeah, because of that. I see that rock. Right here, right, and then we'll have to oh. We're gonna get right a little bit. Oh, what a bump. We're good. And then we're we're good. Here. And we should be good if we fit. If we fit, we may not fit. We're good. We're good. Okay, and then we're gonna go just to the right, I think, even though the left is a little bit better line. Oh, we perched on a boulder here. I see that. We're gonna have to back up and go left. This one I didn't see at all. You now here's where we might spin, so let's not spin. We'll get pinned. Okay, let's go to the left. That one I can't even see in the shadows. Oh, I see. Right? Yeah, it's like, it is? like barely under the water. And uh, at least it's got enough algae on it that we're kind of sliding. Okay, there we go. We made it, I think. Oh, probably could catch a fish right here. <laughs> want to catch another one? You know what my one hope and dream is when we get back? What? That my water bottle has filled. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's been uh, three hours, four hours. So, I hope it's full. <laughs> and drink the whole thing and then set it up to fill again. Like, I just, I'm not going to be able to keep up on my water, I don't think. Yeah, you should fill yours while we're out here, right? Eh? Yeah. I won't be able to <clears throat> keep up on my water, I don't think. Um, there is... A slight possibility that I would find a spring when I am uh, out picking mushrooms. That'll be that'll probably be most of the day. Um, Chris is up to other adventures while I'm foraging mushrooms and doing whatever. So um, to fill in those gaps, you might want to pop over to the Wooded Beardsman's channel and uh, check out his episodes. But we'll meet up again for supper. Worst case scenario is you could use the light. Well, that's good. There don't doesn't appear to be any bugs in there. So that can maybe be a little bit of a lunch snack. But uh, what I really need is that water. So let's see. Oh, it's either. Oh, it's neither. I was going to say it's either empty or it's full because I couldn't see a water line on it. But it is just miserably, miserably only a third full. So that's no good. Oops. Maybe it's partly because the uh, hose isn't elevated enough. We can adjust that, I guess. I was gonna say there's something gross in here. I remember it's coffee and butter. Okay, I'm gonna go foraging probably probably for a couple of hours. It is 20 to 1. Um, so I'm gonna bring my big bag with me and I'm bringing a toilet bag. My work gloves and my axe although I don't expect to need it um, I have a piece of paracord this is the bag that had the salad in it previously so that'll probably come in handy <coughs> um, axe, work gloves and I, I do have kind of a safety kit um, that uh, usually travels with me wherever I go. It has odds and ends in it from time to time. Um, so it's got some gear tape in okay, case so there's like a little hole in my tarp. I can do a quick patch. So that's handy. Um, I think I've showed this before. This is like a an epinephrine kit. If uh, me or someone with me had an allergic reaction. So this is not the uh, EpiPen that you are used to. This is the cheaper alternative, which is to buy epinephrine in a little snap vial. So um, if I had to use this, I would just snap the glass top off. And then I would draw up 
0 0.3 right there 0 0.3 um, cc's or millimeters with this little diabetic syringe um, and then inject it into a big muscle and of course what you need to do to follow up on that is you'd pop a couple of uh, antihistamines in somebody so uh, I got a bunch of Benadryls in there uh, so what else is in here two two needles so I could do two injections of epinephrine I got the Benadryls for the um, antihistamine and I've got two snap vials of epinephrine so that's the emergency anaphylaxic kit a pair of dry socks uh, some wound heal which is like a powder you can put onto uh, a wound to stop it from bleeding um, I've got my fishing and hunting licenses I usually just throw them in here if I'm hunting or fishing so that I have them with me I have some emergency matches and I have an Olight uh, i3T EOS um, and uh, just so you know uh, August the 26th there is going to be a big summer sale so you can get some uh, cool pen lights with green pointers built in um, titanium is it the warrior that they're doing in titanium I forget but they got a lot of cool lights coming out for the summer sale um, so you might want to check that out I will post some links below which are affiliate links so if you buy an Olight um, flashlight from my affiliate link uh, those commissions help support this channel and these kinds of adventures my hair is so long now that when it falls over my shoulder it stays there it used to be shorter so it would like sometimes be there and then fall back now it's just so long gets in the way maybe that's what the axe is for be like a chicken on the killing block but it'll be my ponytail on a stump and we'll just whoop goodbye ponytail goodbye braid I mean it's a braid it's not a ponytail uh, I, I have another item I brought a compass because I don't want to get lost if I'm cruising around in the lake so um, sorry in the woods this lake runs roughly northeast to south -est. that's kind of the long axis and I'm gonna kind of move up onto the hill and then follow the ridge so I shouldn't get lost because I'm following that landform um, but I know if I need to get back to the lake if I go to the northwest then I will have to come to the southeast to get back down to the lake or the next lake or the lake up so it'd be pretty hard to get lost here uh, but I could definitely get turned around for a few hours which would suck because as you know I have no water and no food with me do I have my I don't even have my multi-tool dudes uh, I left it in the canoe let's go get that for sure well I wanted to bring it with me to pick mushrooms but I can wait for you to use it to start a fire Pick mushrooms with a multi-tool? It's my only knife. <laughs> yeah. We could trade. Just, just <laughs> pliers them. Yeah, yeah you're going to give up your Groman? <laughs> you got to clean fish with it after. Oh, wow. I'm cleaning all the fish now? I, I thought I thought that's what I heard. That sounds like a raw deal. That's <laughs> a lot of fish to clean. Yeah, it is. No, I'll help you with that. Yeah, we'll see where I get. I've been over here a couple times picking up firewood. Because uh, I think my maybe in the spring, when the water level's high, all these like beaver chews float up on shore here and then they dry out and they burn fantastically. But I did not show you the spot that we've talked about a couple times, I think, which is this area where the, um, presumably the otters are coming up and eating all these clams there's uh clamshells everywhere here clamshells 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 anyways we're gonna head up the hill 
Um, and we are particularly looking for mushrooms. Uh, edible wild greens, which I think are going to be pretty few and far between um, in this forest type. Most of the ones that I'm familiar with are more like field greens or weeds that come up in your garden or in your lawn. But uh, we'll see what we can do. And then, I don't know if there's like some irresistible birch bark pieces. Maybe we'll bring some back for starting the next fire or... Uh, if I find a dead hemlock, we'll cut up some hemlock bark because it is fantastic for cooking coals. Oh, what that? That didn't take long. That didn't take long. There's some chanterelles in poor condition. Let's see how how poor condition they are in. Um, this one looks good. And it is good. And this one looks good. And it is good. But these ones with like the weird cap edges. I'm not that hungry, I don't think. Um, this one looks good. This one looks good underneath. I could probably trim those edges. Get rid of the get rid of the slugs. We don't need slugs. Oh yeah, they do look pretty good underneath. And then there's a few, a few behind me, but um, we think Chris might not be so good with the uh, mushrooms if they are in peak condition. So maybe we'll be judicious in um, how we select our mushrooms. Judicious or cautious? Conservative. Um, that off. Trim those. Yeah, they look good. This one here just needs the a little bit of a stem clean up. We'll do a better job. I didn't bring a mushroom brush, obviously, as one of my ten items, but a brush is very handy. Um be careful because this knife is a little bit sharper than um, my regular mushroom brush. I don't want to slice my thumb open here trimming mushrooms. But... There, those cleaned up alright. That's a good start. Hopefully we find a lot more of these. Uh, now... What is, what is my plan? Don't forget my multi-tool on the ground. That's my plan. What is my plan about this? I don't want to put food in the pouch that has my toilet bag. And I, oops, I guess I'll put my spare camera batteries in here. And my gloves in here and we'll just throw all kinds of loose mushrooms hopefully down in the main part of the bag and so my axe is out of the way oh I know what we'll do we'll get that piece of paracord and we'll just uh, tie it to the frame that works right um, we'll go. But it otherwise shouldn't just fall out on its own. Because I don't want to lose my... Lose my axe. That would be a disaster. There. Didn't forget my... Multi-tool. Oh. That's a little bit... That's a little bit loose there. Well, we'll haul it around. And uh, I don't think it's going to swing around and clobber me or anything. I think, I think I'm okay. Should be fine. Uh, what have we got here? 
some kind of a pink staining bolete. It's probably probably the bitter bolete. And these are little orange mushrooms, but those are not chanterelles. These are something else. You can see they have um, real thin gills under them. And they are right beside a cave. A, a porcupine's toilet is what this is. Those are porcupine poops. But um, that's a cool spot to hide out from predators. If you're a porcupine, you can get in this side and out the other side. And there's just a porcupine sized space in the middle on this big boulder. See those orange mushrooms over there? Those are yellow chanterelles. Let's get in there. They're not making it easy to get them. Not this patch. And you thought mushroom hunting was a leisurely sport, pastime, hobby. I guess it sometimes can be. Okay. So, on my little pants table here, so yellow chanterelles again, same as the ones we just picked. These ones are in a little better condition. They are slightly waterlogged. Where are we here? Knife. So, um, don't have to trim anything off this one, but of course, you always want to trim these stems off so you don't get all this crud mixed in to your mushrooms. And you see the chanterelles have false false gills. They're more like little ridges running under the cap. They're not blade-like. So they're different from those last ones we looked at by the porcupine den. So just destemming these guys, doing a quick check for slugs or any crud underneath the caps that's easily removed before I just go ahead and um, drop them into my trapper's bag. Guy was just telling me that um, I sent him a picture of the tag on this and he said it's a collector's item now. They don't make them anymore. Don't make them. What's the tag on this one? There. Little mushrooms. Oh, there it is. It's a pretty old bag. Somebody gave it to me. Pioneer brand Trapper Nelson Indian Pack Board number three with a patent. Someone Bulb Solb S O L B Manufacturers Jones Tent and Awning Company Limited, made in Vancouver, British Columbia. Yeah. Well, I don't know if there's an easy way. I don't know if there's an easy way up this hill. So I just decided to pick a path and um, in a completely unlikely place there I found some more, more chanterelle mushrooms in nice condition here. So we will pick them and then we will try to get to the top of this hill. Although so far 
it's the side of the hill that's really really panning out for um, mushrooms yeah this is all I think old riverbank from uh, thousands of years ago an inland lake kind of blew out and drained through here which is why you get these really carved out steep sided uh, hills along the water here because at one time a whole giant lake just drained through here carved a new channel out to the ocean I think if I've got my geographical history ouch correct oops okay uh, I'm just gonna clean these and put them in my bag so I don't fall down the hill here hello squirrel flushed up a grouse and so I paused to watch it fluttering by which caused me to notice these uh, chanterelle mushrooms which I probably was about to walk past so that was fortuitous one two three and we're almost at the top see the trees are all changing to white pines and hardwoods instead of white pines and other other evergreens we're getting there okay and a little more open spot and I spoke too soon there's another another steep piece here but there's like a bit of a wind blow or something that has opened up this spot and I see not enough raspberries to bring back that one's not even hardly ripe but there's a couple here so that's a good little trail snack but we might see some other sun loving <gasps> those aren't sun loving plants those are more oh and over there too and over there whoa and right there we've got our work cut out for us well it's kind of the kind of the best of them anyway so scoop up these guys And put them in the bottom or they hopefully aren't going to get squished all right we're doing good for mushrooms um we just haven't found any greens which i'm not too surprised about and i haven't found any hemlock bark but uh It's definitely the kind of place we could find some hemlock bark. You won't be able to hear it, but I can hear Chris shooting video. You might be able to see the lake down there. We did a lot of climbing. Covered a bit of distance, but a lot of height. It's a pretty, pretty view from up here. Um, and I found a pretty innocuous and boring looking mushroom, but there it is, black chanterelle, another one down there. So we're going to have to watch our step because they are difficult to spot and they are so worth picking um, because of their taste and texture of the yumminess factor so let's get these guys and we'll keep looking 
or more of them. So I often pick them under oak trees, red oaks. Um, at my family camp, uh, pick them under white pines. And here I would say that they are associated with the white pines. Um, there's a couple of nice ones under here as well. So we're gonna end up with a pretty good pretty good pile of mushrooms by all accounts. It might be hard to turn back except that um, we only have one pan to cook in, which is limiting. And oh no, we have the, if we ate all the choke cherries, we could cook in the big choke cherry pot. Um, but I also don't really have extra pots and bags and things, so it would be difficult to bring extras home. They're pretty underneath. They have a an interesting kind of color if you catch them in the light like a salmon pink. Hello squirrel. There are lots of things that we could make tea out of if we wanted to make tea. Um, um, we kind of have a limited number of pots and I'm having a hard enough time just uh, getting water. Um, but boiling water might be something I resort to. In which case, uh, there are lots of uh, winter greens here so they've got these waxy leaves and um, if you chew on them they have a very strong spearmint flavor or mint flavor um, with all the white pine trees around as well we could make a nice uh, white pine needle tea some of the winter greens even have their little new white berries i haven't seen one yet with a red berry on it but there's that uh, balsam needle tea blueberry plants you can make a tea with blueberry leaves or even with the uh, raspberry leaves we saw those just on the hill there where I picked the um, yellow chanterelles but um, I'm pretty much gonna say this is now just a mushroom pick and not not a salad pick based on uh, the kinds of things that I'm seeing. So let's pick those mushrooms. Well, I really was not expecting to find trash way up on top of the hill here, but there it is. A water bottle with precious water still in it. Oh, Jeremy, should we drink it? No, not a chance. Not a chance, but we'll take this bottle back because nobody wants to leave trash in the woods or recycling in the woods. Here's a plant that you don't see very often. It kind of grows everywhere around here, but they're really few and far between. And that is rattlesnake plantain I believe is the name of it or dwarf rattlesnake plantain going from memory I'll have to look it up and I'll put the uh, proper name on the screen but it's a very pretty little plant kind of stands out because of that pattern um, just looking my way through the woods here we're into a little more a little more hardwood now is a little bit different. Um, I got another another bully over here. Um, it's too spongy though. It's uh, no good. But I guess while I'm down on the ground, I will throw this water bottle into this pocket, and then I'm done with it. I got a collection of garbage to bring back. There were a few old cans and bits of plastic at the campsite, and then you always find junk here and there when you're wandering around. 
sometimes you find really cool junk. Sometimes you just find plain old junk. You might have some decent puffballs here. What are these? Some kind of a some kind of like a gem studded puffball maybe. This crinkly top, but they are too soft. So I won't pick those ones. They can just stay and mature. Here are some yellow corals or uh, yellow finger mushrooms. Oh, okay, I think I think we might have hit a little jackpot here. Because this pink this pink color and that firmness makes me think that this is a nice hedgehog mushroom and it was wrong it is a beautiful hedgehog mushroom over here another beautiful hedgehog mushroom there's a few different kinds of them uh that uh are they dentinum species or hidden them um oh man there's a bonanza here okay so more hedgehogs down there and let's let's not forget about them but let's have a peek over here oh look another kind of chanterelle huge patch of oh my god they're everywhere there's so many so many so many so many um these are the I'm going to say Cantharellus infundibulus, the uh, winter chanterelle. So, they're not all in great shape, but a, oop, dropped a hedgehog. Um, a bunch of them are in really nice shape. They have a hole in the middle that goes right through, and they're called the yellowfoots. I think these ones are the yellowfoots, and they have, believe it or not, you may be surprised to see a yellow foot. Um, and there are tons, so I'm going to pick them. Just trim the little bottom off. You can split them open and check inside to see if there's anybody living in there. Um, other features <clears throat> that I'm looking for, again, they, um, they don't have true blades underneath. They're more of like a ridge, and they run down the stipe. And these guys tend to grow in... Um, clusters and groups and lines and singly so they have various uh, growth arrangements but here yeah I would say they are um, growing everywhere come and see if we just deep around this tree they are there and there and there some little ones down there and some more over there and then there's even like another patch of them over there they run all through the trees here and then there's another patch of those um, hedgehogs over there so we hit the jackpot more mushrooms way more mushrooms I think than Chris and I can eat today well this is just a portion of what's here in this patch that I could pick um, and the forager in me is pretty sad to have to leave so many lovely delicious mushrooms behind but the reality is um, Chris and I can only eat so many mushrooms and I don't really have a way to store them well and bring them back tomorrow so I'm just gonna have to uh, call it there so that should be plenty for uh, tonight's meal and tomorrow's meals. Um, I have to try and remember this spot. So from that campsite, oh, I just saw something good. Go 
perpendicular to the lake and it brings you to a game trail and on the game trail there's this spot with these big aspen trees and it's a mushroom bonanza including and I had my fingers crossed that I would see them and I didn't and I was a little bit disappointed but also told myself not to be greedy but there they are some black chanterelles growing right beside moose poop yum yum oh there's some nice ones there so this was a kind of a triple bonanza because it had hedgehogs and winter chanterelles and black chanterelles and i see more black chanterelles and i see some mushrooms that i'm not going to pick but you'll you'll want to see these also and then i'm going to head back to camp but uh these are called dead man's fingers they're like a black club fungi that comes out of the ground and people say that they are like the fingers of dead corpses um, anyway so that's pretty cool to see now these black chanterelles I don't know I don't know why they're growing on the trail I didn't previously believe them to be associated with um, big aspen trees but maybe they are so it might be worth a little a little peek around here before we take off so there's black chanterelles and trim those ones very good but there we are black chanterelles more black chanterelles and I thought I saw some other ones here that were worth a pick. So the first ones were here. Oh, here they are. Just a few little ones here. And I will keep my eyes peeled for more as we make our way back to the camp. For a feast. Win, win, win. Just no salad today, but got a feast of mushrooms and a feast of fish. I just had a close call. Um, was oh he got me too son of a bitch one under my pants I hate when that happens I uh was like who dug a hole in the ground and filled it with wood shavings and I stepped a little bit closer to have a look and it's uh big old yellow jacket nest something dug it up so like that means they're extra ticked off and so I walked away quickly slowly because I didn't want to like get them all worked up but one one still got in my pant leg and got me on the leg right near the ankle I hate that when you step on a ground wasp nest and you're like, oh, what's that noise? And then all of a sudden they're up your pant legs and stinging you on the legs. Anyway, probably fine, but the last couple of times that I've been stung, I've had uh, not great reactions to the um, stings. So that's one reason why I carry an epinephrine kit um, for, uh, for me for just in case like I don't I've never had an anaphylactic reaction but you know they can get worse every time you get stung so just playing it safe and uh, the other reason is because like my kids could be allergic to something and I don't know until it happens and a lot of the time we're pretty pretty far out in the woods so uh, 
anyway, we'll just keep calm and walk on. I uh, I didn't take the direct route back uh, because because it was so steep. And then as I walked a little further, I got to thinking that um, I think if I skirt the hill, then it's much gentler. And uh, I think I kind of end up doing a bit of a half circle and it maybe drops me back down to the campsite. But oh, this sounds like a spring. Oh, maybe, maybe it was worth it to get stung. Look, look, water. I wonder, we're actually not that far from camp, so I can come back here and maybe I just want to see if my filter has been producing or not. Well, it's cold water, so that's a good sign that it's not just oozing out of some beaver's toilet somewhere upstream. Well, that's good news. Maybe we'll come back here. Um, so I just have to remember to get to where all these big cedars are and I could take my chances on some mossy water. Couldn't possibly go right bad, right? Um, and I'm actually, I don't know if you can see the lake through the trees, but I see the lake through the trees, so pretty close to being back. Now, what's this? Something else has been digging around here, but this one's not not a wasp nest. Something else. I'm uh, not so secretly hoping that Chris just went ahead and cleaned all those fish. Because I'm not really looking forward to that. But I'm looking forward to eating them, so... Suck it up, buttercup, right? Clean some fish and uh, get this supper show on the road. So I basically um, did a big circle. Uh, started by going straight uphill and then did a very gentle loop coming back. So I just have to keep in mind if I ever come back here that. Uh, it's easier to get up there by doing the longer loop than to go straight up the hill. And here I am, right back at my campsite. Now, oh, is Chris still here? Or did he go fishing? Or did he go on some other adventure? Excuse me, have you seen the bearded woodsman? Never heard of him. Have you seen the wooded beardsman? Never heard of him. Have you seen the shirtless beardsman? Uh, trying to be him, I guess. Yeah? My imitation of him. Imposter. Were you, were you banging uh, on the tree up there? No. The Sasquatch then. Yeah, did you hear some knocking? I was communicating with him. Oh. Thought maybe you were playing a joke, so I played it back. Oh. And then it escalated, or what? Uh, I kind of fizzled out. <laughs> yeah. I don't think the uh, Sasquatch believed me, so uh, kind of was a stalemate, I guess. Yeah. Maybe I wasn't doing the call right. <laughs> it was. Bup, 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 bup. Oh. Was, okay, I'll do that back. Morse code. Yeah. Found some garbage. I think I, I just was off on a beat or two. Yeah. <laughs> You did not sound like an attractive mate to the Sasquatch. I guess not. But that's why you got your shirt off, I guess. It's for Sasquatch. Re repellent. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's a repellent. 
Yeah. When they find out I'm not hairy, they're out of there. Hairy enough. Yep. Whoa, that's a haul. <laughs> yeah. I hit the jackpot. Mm -hmm. You know what else I hit? Mm. I stepped on a hornet nest. Mm. Oh yeah, I just got a baby sting, but one uh, nice. got me through the sock, got up my pant leg. Did I tell you about the time I pooped on a hornet's <laughs> nest? I don't think so. I got two on my bum. <laughs> that didn't feel good. I bet not. Mm -mm. Now I always make sure. Yeah. You know, pooping in a hole. Yeah. <laughs> want to uh, heat it up? Oh, maybe, maybe not. Which one is it? It's the big one. Nice, the yeah. big bass. That's all that's left. Wow. What about the free inchworm there? Yeah, yeah. you want that? That caught my eye too. <laughs> nice, I am definitely going to get into that. Okay, water first, fish second. And then when the pan's clear, more fish. And maybe um, get into those mushrooms soon too. This, what a rip off. Been gone for like two hours and there's that. I'm just not gonna be able to keep up. I don't know what's going on there. Let it trickle some more. That's it, just a little sting near my ankle. It's not swelling, it's not really painful. So I'm just gonna air some sweat away and I'm sure it's gonna be fine. I polished off the rest of that fish. It was delicious, really hit the spot and freeze the pan up for some mushroom cooking soon and some more fish soon. And I've just really been enjoying the uh, choke cherry sauce, shall we call it? I don't know. Uh, filter the seeds out the pits. I think it's partly hitting the spot because it's liquid and my water is uh, not filtering very quickly. It's uh, it's choke cherry delight. I choke gave, cherry delight. I gave it a name. Oh, like, okay. sun, like Sunny D. Only two ingredients. <laughs> choke cherry D. One is water, and you have to guess the second one. <laughs> I need some more ingredients though. A little bit of maple syrup and a little bit of cheesecloth. Yeah, and some lemon. And you have a... A big jello? Choke cherry D, D. Choke cherry delight deluxe. Hmm. <laughs> the double D. Cherry double D, baby! <laughs> <laughs> we have a commercial right now. And by running through the woods. Mm -hmm. I need refreshments. <laughs> oh yeah. Got me some cherry double D. <laughs> I don't know what you've gotten into that's made you so silly, but <laughs> a big big giant bass. <laughs> Got into a big piece of bass, eh? Yep. Big ass. Oops, I can always say that. Big butt bass. <laughs> I think you are allowed to say that one. I don't know. Because it's a donkey. I think you can say them all, they just can't be in your thumbnail title. <laughs> and well into the video. And they can't be excessive and gratuitous. <laughs> Stevie got... Funfer, he swears all the time in my videos, but... They never get demonetized? No. Nope. No. Nope. I have a off-camera story for you. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'm going to turn <laughs> off the camera and see you guys after.
do a side adventure. Where am I? I am beside you. Back in the canoe we go. Yeah, it's a lot of fish. What's the strat? Yeah, what's your plan here? I'm gonna, I'm going in the water. Yeah? I'm gonna find some water, water bowls. Edible water things. Yeah. We know we'll find clams, but uh, maybe some crayfish. Yeah, crayfish know. would be fun, eh? I heard a bullfrog over there, so. Yeah, that guy gave himself away. <laughs> that might be what I'll go do. Oh, yeah, okay. Maybe I'll go look for that bullfrog. All right, well, if, you, uh, if he escapes, let me know and I'll track him down. Okay. <laughs> He's pretty much pinned there though. Well, yeah. Unless he goes down. Yeah. Um, which he might try to do. Yeah, I just think he's he's just over there by that cedar tree. Drum roll, drum roll, please. Where is it? You got one? Yeah. Big boulder here to stand on. Oh, it's your perch. Maybe. <laughs> I'm fogging up again. Oh, it's going to be a tedious task. We need like a way to pass them. Maybe they like a dive pouch. Is that good there? Well, that's where you can leave. <laughs> All right. There you go. There's one. Okay. Four, five more? Sure. Or three more. <laughs> Yeah, I think it, would, it could have been... Could have been pike or bass or muskies or... Whoa. I can't do the deep water though anymore. No? Too many Jaws movies when I was too young. Oh yeah. I'm just like, when I get out in the... the when can't I can't see, see the bottom, yeah, I'm like, no, no, I'm done. What I liked in the river was cool. Yeah. Shark can't hide in there. No. <laughs> Not easily. No, you'd see his fin breaking along with it off. Stupid Jaws. <laughs> what a rip that is. Ruined it for everybody. Don't... Let your kids watch Jaws, ever, <laughs> if you want them to be able to swim in this stuff. Yeah. Because <laughs> literally, um, there's lots of places for a shark to hide. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't see f past 10 feet down there no. either. We'll just uh, contain our clams in the net. One, two, three, four, five, six. Probably need a scrub. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, you're just like a raccoon, you. Now <laughs> <laughs> When we were cleaning fish down by the lake, we brought them over and then something caught my eye, which is oh, right there. Penny. It's an American penny. And uh, what's the date on this guy? Oh, it's going to be hard to read. It is... ...1991. It's not even that old. I'm going to leave it there to catch somebody else's eye. I decided that I cannot wait until tomorrow morning to, oops, well I can stay there, to drink water. 
because this is about the filtration rate per hour on that thing right now. I think I've only peed two or three times today, not getting enough water, so I'm giving in and we're going to the spring. We are going to go back to that spring that I found and I'm going to drink from it. I can uh, hear the water gurgling. So I just want to follow it up the hill a little farther and maybe find a spot that's running gurgly and cold and clear but it also kind of has to be um, deep enough for me to fill my water bottle that'll be the that'll be the main challenge um, and to do that I might have to excavate a little piece and Oh, or maybe not. So I'm pretty sure that I was at near the source. There's no there's no beaver dam up there or stagnant water. And I think that uh, it's probably not likely that there's a big dead animal lying in here somewhere. Okay. Uh, I just did a whole bunch of stuff and the camera wasn't on um, so very quickly there is a little bit of sediment and I've scraped it away and it's all sand underneath um, so I just excavated it so that it's deep enough that I can fill mostly fill my water bottle and then I've just been waiting for the stuff that I stirred up to clear to get carried away by this trickle of water it looks pretty similar to um, other springs that I've drunk from. There's a few in my neck of the woods that I fairly frequently drank from and I think the dirtiest thing here right now is the coffee and butter that just came out of my water jug. Um, so <clears throat> I don't I don't need to go crazy on water but I am I am out so I'm gonna drink some and then fill my water bottle, drink it again with supper, and then I'll just leave it on the filter overnight. And by morning I should have a full jug, which should get me through enough of tomorrow to get to a clean water source. Tastes fine. Okay, that kind of hit the spot. This is the kind of spot where, um, with a little work, <clears throat> oh, sorry, I didn't adjust the camera. A little more water. With a little work, you could um, kind of excavate a bit, a bit of a pool here, maybe put a cedar trough into the bank and it would catch clean water and then you'd have, you know, you could fill buckets under it. But uh, we're only here for so long, so that'll do for now. Yeah, there isn't a, there isn't a good trail coming up here. So the two things this spot would need, this, the two things this spot would need, I did say that right, right? Are um, a better trail and then a better filling spot. So whether that's a bit of an excavated pool with some clean rock or gravel or um, to drive a uh, pipe or a cedar trough into the bank so the water runs down and off of it. The spot actually reminds me a lot about where I want to take Chris tomorrow. So just to switch things up, I thought we'll eat the rest of our food here in the morning. We'll pack and go. And 
I've got a uh, trout fishing spot that I call the meat locker. You may have seen me there before with uh, Stevie Funfer. And there's basically uh, a shallow sandy pond that you would not think would hold trout. But there are cold springs coming out of the hill and the um, speckled trout or the brook trout are all congregated at the mouths of these cold springs. So there's probably three spots that I know of around the lake where you can just stand at the spring mouth and cast out. Oh, I walked through a big spider web. Um, cast out and catch trout. Um, so I'm thinking we can cap off our trip by going there, catching our five each, and then doing a big, uh, big shore lunch. I think that would be that would be pretty awesome. So right now I'm going back. We're gonna have an awesome supper, campfire mushrooms, and fresh fish. No, it's just. You ran into Sasquatch. Oh, because my shirt's open? Yeah. I'm trying to cool down. It's going to be a... Uh, After that love affair with Sasquatch. Yeah. It worked out. Whew, steamy. <laughs> She's a real beast. She? Yeah. Nice. Oh, you didn't think I got with the man squatch, did you? <laughs> Come never, on. Never thought there was a she. Oh. She squatch. You just, just haven't been with enough Sasquatches yet. <laughs> Thankful to say. <laughs> <laughs> Fire looks good. It's gonna be a nice bed of coals there. Yeah, I was gonna go aggressive on this one because every other time we did it, it oh. was uh, frustrating near the end to cook. Yeah. So I just, last night we don't have to preserve our wood too badly. No. No. You know, yeah, because uh, we you can have, don't have to cook in the morning, right? Well, you can have a birch bark fire to cook your coffee. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that won't take long. Yeah, or yeah. We don't have anything else to cook. I put the fish in the, in the bag here because the bat, the flies are on it. Yeah, yeah. But it's not gonna last. Like we're gonna have to eat that. Yeah, we're gonna cook it and eat it. Or sleep with it. And yeah. eat it while you're we'll, sleeping. We'll cook and eat it. <laughs> I'll get those mushrooms going there as soon as there's a good bed of coals to cook on, and looks good. Yeah, I got you. Uh... I just gotta cool down a little bit and dry off. I think I got a little bit of water in me and then it just went straight to sweat. That uh, spring is, is pretty cool. Yeah. And it goes through cedar roots and sand. So it seems fairly legit, but like check in with me in five days. <laughs> All right. Is this a fire poker and a cherry masher? Oh, it's hot. Oh, that fire is throwing some heat. Maybe I'll use this uh, other thing. Yeah, you didn't skimp on the coals on this one. No, the way it should be done. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be great. Um, do either one of us Yeah, have our gloves nearby? Ready to go. Throw some extra butter in there. I haven't done anything. I didn't know what you wanted to do. Man overboard. <laughs> How many times have you brought the choke cherries up to a boil? Uh, I don't know. A dozen? A yeah. dozen? They're um a lot. I've I feel like I ate a lot of those choke cherries, but there's still so much left. I guess because we keep adding water and drinking the juice, but they've really stretched out, eh? I think we need to strain it. That would be the ideal situation to strain it. Yeah. We don't have a good way to transport it out of here to no, try straining it. it. So that's, that's it. This is, um, if you challenge yourself to camp with minimal gear, or in our case, reputedly only 10 items, you really start to 
appreciate the extra things like having a fillet knife for filleting your fish instead of your multi-tool and having real fish pliers to take hooks out of your fish instead of your multi-tool and um, having <clears throat> a bag or a basket for collecting mushrooms instead of your backpack that just carried your 10 items in for you. They're all, all good things to have. So, you know, if you feel like challenging yourself, do, uh, do a minimalist weekend and over a few days you really kind of see what, uh, what equipment shines for you. Oh, look how good these are looking. I'll put a little splash of spring water in there and let them simmer a little bit more. Because I think some of the meatier ones aren't cooked quite through. Yeah, even not having a, uh, yeah, mash those cherries. Not having extra plates, right? Like, so we have to cook those mushrooms, cool the pan down enough that we can eat them, then cook the fish, Yeah. cool it down, eat it, and then cook more fish. We need to bushcraft the rest. And yes, yeah, unless we go and like cut up more sheets make, of clean birch bark and stuff. Make plates and yeah. cutlery and yeah. cups. Ain't got time for all that. <laughs> Not and to get, collect most of our food. And fishing. Yeah. Fun thing. I would say these are now very well cooked. Keep going. Keep going. All right. Unless you don't. Unless you don't want to. They just don't appear to be cooking anymore. The long, even though they're in longer, I think they'll just start to get crispy spots on them. I'm okay with that. Good. We want to cook again we got to put the we got to put all of them but yeah. they're not all gonna fit they're not gonna fit there's my uh pushing spatula here there's another bridge bar oh we uh we probably need another splash of butter in this pan yeah we mm. almost did one stick in case you're curious between the two of us They were smallmouth bass, but you're saying they're shrink bass? Shrink bass, yeah. You've been telling them all your problems or <laughs> I don't got no problems. I got smallmouth bass and well, mushrooms. Not and... Now that you've talked to the shrink bass. Hear that. Hmm. That was a hedgehog. Meaty and firm. The black shot corral is like a uh, like a cooked seaweed in texture. I find you don't have your hors d'oeuvre mm. implement. Yeah, we should have. We could have each brought toothpicks as part of our <laughs> ten items. is are we gonna put more fish on <laughs> well we have to we have to we, we have to cook them we got to do it we have uh, no way of preserving anything and it's hot mm -hmm. so maybe we'll wait because I don't think uh, the fillets will take that long maybe the whole fish will take a little bit longer but and we mm -hmm. can eat in pieces eat in peace mm -hmm. pieces. there you go who's who here 
It doesn't matter. Which one you want? Well, this one's within reach, so. There you go. We got our beautiful presentation. Birch bark plates. You guys have a peek of that. I think that would, uh, you could serve that in a fancy restaurant. Yep. On a on a birch bark plate. Charge uh, <laughs> a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's no small feat putting this together. No. <laughs> right? I'm going to, oh, it's breaking apart nicely. Mm-hmm. Yep. The skin is uh, Ooh. really tasty. Ah, that's very hot. Oh, that's good. I'm going to do a little, uh, I think I got enough. Yeah? I'm going to do a little taste test and then I'm going to get the fish on while that fire is still hot. Oh. Because we don't want to have to keep more fire going than, and than we want to. And the mosquitoes are going to come out after dark. Mm -hmm. So we want to be all done. Mm -hmm. So that's a good enough reason to keep going, I think. Alright, it's good. It's good, but it's time for a change also. Mm -hmm. Oh, the clams. Oh, I forgot the clams. Yeah. What are we going to do with those? Cook them tomorrow. <laughs> we could. For breakfast. Ooh, stay tuned. That'll be a good breakfast because they won't go bad. Mm -hmm. They're still alive in the net and they'll purge overnight. We need to drink up all that juice so we can use that pot. Yeah, I think we'll be done with that tonight anyway. I don't, Yeah. I wouldn't be really comfortable <coughs> keeping, like, it's going to ferment or we're going to get drunk tomorrow. Oh, let's, <laughs> let's ferment it. Let's do it on purpose. <laughs> now you, we've got to carry it out with you. <laughs> we'll have some choke cherry wine and my liver yeah I made choke cherry wine before that was really good I was surprised yeah or something you could do that we'll see how many bass we can eat here we put all the bones on this piece of birch bark and then we'll pitch it burn it after I think we're gonna finish up here right in time because um, it's starting to rain a little bit. Well, I'm still not in frame. What? It's starting to rain a little bit. I'm just doing my stretches. Um, we still have this much fish to cook. That fish is about to come off. So, do a few more rounds of fish. Eat it all. And then, uh, Head over to the tent. It's also mosquito o'clock. It's getting on close to 7:30, so um, just gonna cook and eat, and cook and eat, and then I'll catch you afterwards. few mosquitoes out there. I guess they've just been waiting all night for me to come out of here. It's about 6.30. get that backwards. <sighs> what are we looking at? Sun's not quite up yet I guess. Or it's behind those clouds. Pretty calm lake. Not too much going on. So Gonna get ourselves organized. I think we're gonna have um, those clams for breakfast, and maybe these wild mushrooms. Although those would be pretty good with some uh, brook trout later, some speckled trout. Uh, 
Well, this is good. I got, I got a full water bottle in the night. So we're gonna turn that into some of that horrible coffee. Over fish from yesterday. It uh, stayed over here by the fire pit all night, no problems. And a big pot of water ready to start boiling here for um, mussels. I think maybe when it comes to a boil, maybe I'll just steal a little bit of that water for a bit of coffee. I forgot to burned my fish bones last night so I'm gonna do that this morning I don't think I uh, I don't think I showed everybody your abode. This is a, did you say you got this from Princess Auto? Yeah. Yeah. With a digital camo pattern. Yeah. That's cool. Pretty sturdy. And the rope too. Big bundle of paracord. Yep. Got nice. lots left still. Nice. I was, I was just thinking, I saw a piece of rope up a tree, but it's too high up. I'm not going to bother. <laughs> well, you, nice. can have, you can have my pieces of rope after if you want. Yeah, you're just going to leave them. <laughs> you need, uh, you need a mosquito net. I do. Um, so mine, these guys have seen mine. They don't see my face, but you've seen mine, which is the oh. box one. You can also buy a triangle one. I'm not even in the frame. A triangle one would work. Yeah. yeah. That's um, the big difference I find between my lens and your lens is my lens catches this much and your lens catches this much. Yeah, the wide angle. Yeah, yeah, that's handy. But... Uh, don't do this like this until the mosquitoes are gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Not good. No, the mosquitoes were not nice. Not nice to us. How long have I had this camera for now? Wilderness Living Challenge Season 2. Which was way back in the... <laughs> Three years? 2018 or 2017. Three years. <clears throat> Three, years. Three years. Yeah. No more. Are you thinking of getting another one? <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> I'm just, um, I'm just surprised how long that camera's lasted. Cause oh, yeah, it's you good think camera. about what you've put your cameras through. Your first camera, you did a million views on your first elf. Yeah. And it went to Puddle Lake. It came out in the winter. It came yeah. out when it was minus forty degrees. Yeah. Right? Like it, it ate batteries like crazy though. Because yeah. it wasn't made for film. It's a picture no. camera. Yeah. And uh, that camera I had too. Mm -hmm. Dunked it. Mm -hmm. And I kept using it but uh, then it started doing weird things. Oh yeah. Because the circuit probably got fried. Yeah. And then so I got a replacement. And then this one. Yeah, a lot of miles on there. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, mine, uh, just see how much longer it keeps going. <laughs> well, I have another one just like it, but I keep it for hunting because it's got a better zoom. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah, because oh, this yeah, doesn't work, no, it doesn't work like at a, all in the tree stand or anything. No, unless it's you just, start switching lenses all the time, which is a real pain. Yeah, I don't prefer to do that. So I'll take that one. I'll use that just for hunting still and on the tree stand. Yeah. You could zoom in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Because everything happens far away when you hunt. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like this. <laughs> but yeah. So See what today brings? A big pile of brook trout. More soreness, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm good with everything. I'm not looking forward to portaging that canoe again. <laughs> well, but only... Do we... I forget, are we one lake or two lakes back now? I was trying to figure it out. Like, did we portage once or twice yesterday? We're two lakes back, but we only had to portage one of them. Right? Because we started on the big lake, and then we paddled the river to this first lake. Then we portaged into this lake. Oh, okay. So we're only one back. So we're, well, or three back, depending on how you, we're one portage back. Yeah. We're two lakes away from the main lake. Right. Well, we paddled up the river. Yeah. Yeah, and I couldn't think of if we we portage twice, but I thought it was only once, but I couldn't figure out how that worked because yeah. we're two lakes back. But that's why. Yeah. So, should be not too bad. Yeah. One portage. Yeah, should be good. We have a little bit of leftovers to eat. Is it no good? <clears throat> no, it looks fine. Are you going to eat it? Yeah. I was thinking gonna, last night, it's pretty hot. I don't know if I would eat it. Yeah, I'm going to have, I'm going to start my day with my cheat item, which is coffee. I brought coffee because um, <laughs> I don't know that I'll get a headache if I don't drink coffee. But if I didn't bring coffee and I got a headache, I would hate it. That's part of your rations. But you didn't have a ration, so that's your 11th. I have a ration, I have, I have butter. <laughs> okay, so that it's part of your rations, yeah. butter and coffee. Yeah. All right, I guess uh, before we go fishing, I'm going to have to get rid of get rid of you have to pack up all my stuff so i'm gonna let my let my filter drain out here and dry in the sun a little bit i don't know if i was even still in the frame uh i don't know why i'm taking care of it because i'm probably going to put it in the garbage when i get home get a working one okay where to start where to start I'm gonna put all my sleeping stuff is gonna go in this big bag put my glasses on my head and those things can go in this bag Oh, there's the case for my water bottle. Here's my vest that I never got cold enough to put on. The life jacket. The my headlamp. Um, it's a reminder that there is a uh, whole light flashlight sale, August twenty sixth. I got lots of goodies on sale. That goes over here. The nice thing about a down sleeping bag is that it compresses down a lot and uh, it takes up very, very little space in the gear I forget what this one's rated minus minus four maybe or zero degrees or like it's not like a super warmish one but you can always like double it up and it's just itty bitty cell phone for emergencies okay. sleeping pod Now I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do. Huh. There's a sizable fish just jumped right there. Um I have to figure out what I'm gonna do with all these extra mushrooms. Which I think are gonna be really good with um brook trout, speckle trout. Get them out of the way for 
for now. And uh, I think we still have a Ziploc bag from all the greens we ate in the last episode. We had a big wild green salad um, that we stewed down, like a fried salad to process those greens. So I'll use that bag. Uh, or maybe they'll fit. I have a butter pot because I brought a ration as one of my items and it's a uh, pound of pound of butter. But I put it in a Tupperware so it wouldn't get all squished and smear all over my gear. So maybe those mushrooms will fit in there. Okay, you might remember that when I did all my knots, I made them quick release um, so that taking down my gear is fast and efficient. So those are those top line hitches. is to bring my corners together one two three four corners then I have all my ropes together it out. And then just try and <coughs> it looks bulky but uh, it's not. I just don't want to get any twigs stuck to it. Or what's this? An old Crusty, dried up slug, maybe. Gross. What a way to go. Alright. Yeah, so this, again, is uh, a really handy item that doesn't take up too much space. So if you are ever camping without a tent and you're worried about bugs biting you or even about things like mice running across your face in the dark um, this is the trick it's tall enough that you can use it with a, a pretty high roofed shelter um, and versatile enough that you can use it in a very very low shelter or low tarp as uh, mine, I would say, is like mid-height right now. If it got windy, I was going to lower my tarp down. Down another foot, maybe. Anyway, that's all the space that that takes. Um, got my ground sheet. That was another one of my items. And what I'm going to do is just let it dry in the sun a little bit. It's damp on the, damp on the bottom side really want to unpack it in my living room and have all this stuff taken up space to dry out. Same as this guy's going to need a little bit of drying so quick, quick release top line hitches. And 
then on my corners, quick release bow lines. So there's one rope. Two ropes. Three ropes. <clears throat> And fourth one. So if you learn your knots, it saves you a lot of a lot of time and grief. I just like to bundle them up a little bit so they don't uh, get all tangled up in my rope bag <clears throat> sometimes <coughs> excuse me sometimes I'll do a fancy bundle but a lot of the time I just kind of double them over and put an overhand knot in them So rope was one of my one of my ten items. Um, I was lazy, I guess, and I just brought my rope bag, which actually has far more rope in it than I needed to bring, including a fifty foot roll of paracord. A bunch of ropes that I've found at campsites. Um, so that was kind of unnecessary. I've actually only used the four ropes for my tarp corners and one rope I happened to bring with me when I was uh, mushroom picking in the last season. <laughs> the last season in the last uh, episode. And I used that to tie my, my axe to my backpack. There we go. Rope bag. I don't think I will need rope anymore, so I'm going to put it in the bottom of my main bag. And I'm going to take my axe out of there. Alright. Then all I have to do is let the stuff dry a bit fold it all down, stuff it all in there, and uh, then we'll be good. But I gotta go make that coffee first. It takes so long to boil that much water, eh? Yeah, it's gonna take a long time. I don't want these to uh, get too hot here, but fish before coffee? Not normally. Getting <clears throat> pretty close to a boil. Boiling on the corner. <clears throat> Won't be long till make a little bit of coffee. Okay, that water's on a boil. Chris is getting some water, but when he comes back, we're gonna dunk the clams. So these guys, we just had them in the lake in the net overnight. So Chris got those with the snorkel. Uh, in the last episode and um, hopefully they've just been purging out any sand or grit that was in them they were kind of suspended in the water in the net so they can't get away on you and we're gonna have ourselves a 
little uh, clam boil. We've been picking away at this fish here too. But I'm just waiting for my coffee to cool down enough. I can drink it up. I was trying to decide if I want to put some butter in there and I think I do. I think I'm going to butter it up. Lake water tastes like lake? Yeah. Who would have thought? Warm lake water. <laughs> My coffee is going to taste like butter. So we got a good rolling boil here and we're going to try to do something, well, fancy schmancy with the mussels. We're going to call it gourmet mussels. We're going to try to just put them in long enough that they open up and then we're gonna pull them out and then fry them with butter and wadobo because if we boil them too long, I found they end up being chewy. So we're gonna try not to have chewy mussels today. All right, we got one, two, Three, four, five, six. Th Ooh, that's hot. Gloves behind you. Let's take this off instead of fighting the fire. Ooh. Okay. You're smoky down there. This is where having some extra utensils like a, some tongs would be handy. Did, did somebody ask for tongs? No way. Okay, <coughs> well, here we go. Might be a two-man job. Maybe. I can get them up. Oh, I'll get rid of that guy. Got him. There we go. One down. There we go. That's the meat. Oh, it's a combo. Uh oh, <laughs> caught the stick too. Nice. You got that guy. Oh, Still he's attached. hanging. He's hanging on. like a bunch of otters have been eating at the campfire now. <laughs> we're, we're working down the food chain. <laughs> yeah. I suppose we could dump a little bit of the water too, right? Oh yeah, we're not to make it easier anymore. to catch them, yeah. Yeah, let's pour a little bit out then. Okay. If my girls were here, they would be convinced that one of these would have a pearl in it. Oh, it could be. Could have just staged one. Just brought a pearl and then, yeah. like those, my kids watch ridiculous videos about that. Pearls in there? Oh, people finding like handfuls of pearls inside of like grocery store oysters. It's just stupid. <laughs> stupid. Those look good. Like like seafood quality. That guy's hanging on. Yeah. Blue Jays are making a real racket over there. One of them was doing a very convincing bald eagle call. Yeah. What for? <clears throat> Sometimes they just do that, or they do red-tailed hawk calls. Yeah. Yeah, they're, uh, or um, broadwing hawk calls they do. I don't know, they just like to pretend to be predators like us. Well, there we go, how does that look? I think that looks like you could serve it in a restaurant and get away with it. I don't see any grit, but we'll find out with our teeth, that's for sure. The 
this is what the third time we've tried this as an experiment uh yep puddle lake those were the best ones we ever ate wilderness living challenge season uh, one i remember i fed these to courtney mm -hmm. and she couldn't eat them no but there were just nothing on them no spice oh. no nothing <clears throat> yeah and uh not purged or anything so i don't know if that did much for it i think yeah you need you need the butter and everything you right? need to do something ready to go oh yeah that's good hmm. got a chewy part a watery part <laughs> it's got every parts of it mm -hmm. a soft part you might liken this to something oh i've got a grit you got it. And water. I heard that one. Or and butter. It's got a juicy part. It's got a tough part. It's got all kinds of textures in there. Mm -hmm. You could liken this to something. It's an aphrodisiac. That's oysters. Totally different animal. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, it's good. It's chewy. Mm -hmm. it's chew there's like a chewy the part. It's the foot that's it's chewy, foot. I think. Yeah. There's like, I feel like there's one section of it that's you could eat mm -hmm. the other section of it's like eh. you probably could figure out how to cut it out it's mm -hmm. that piece there right i think it's just a foot so and probably a lot of people don't know that about clams but that foot they actually push it out of their shell mm -hmm. and pull their shell forward that's how they move through the water yeah and if you swim up to them uh you probably i don't know maybe maybe you can see in the gopro but they they stay open because mm -hmm. they're filter feeding but when you come to grab them they close up really fast and they're protected mm -hmm. and that's the kind of the defense mechanism and then otherwise they just spend the rest of the time sitting on the bottom filtering the water column for nutrients mm -hmm. so would you what would you give that on a scale of one to ten oh. not as a survival food but as a food altogether oh like a four <laughs> not bad eh? that's yeah. the texture is that chewy piece that's like throws you off because you're like oh it's not really ready to go down but the more you chew it it doesn't really break up so much no not at all yeah i'd say it was a four but i'd say as a survival food it's probably like a nine calories in calories out but it is there's no fat in it that maybe drops yeah. it down it depends like <clears throat> if you've got the butter and the wadobo it might be a nine yeah okay, on maybe their it's, own they're like a six maybe it's like a six it's a four as a food and a six as a no it's got to be less than a four as a modern food it's probably like a two or three yeah well if you gave people this they'd be like all right let's give it a shot I'm not, probably not gonna do that again yeah so it's not the worst thing in the world but uh it's not that it's not that bad it's doable mm -hmm. that's the thing tastes good well, and it answers the questions a lot of people don't know if freshwater clams are edible or not yeah and there's a lot of them they're edible but not incredible there's a lot like everywhere throughout a lake that has them they're everywhere mm. they're very easy to catch so i feel like i need to mention that up here we have a ton of them and they're all the same kind relatively but down south you get a lot of endemic patches of endangered freshwater species yeah, these aren't endangered no not near as i can tell no, no but if you go down to southern ontario because as you can imagine they don't move too much <laughs> it's like every river system has different species right yeah so you have to be careful you, sh you should not harvest um southern ontario ones unless you know how to identify species to species yeah mm -hmm. that's your last one it is sorry i thought a fish jumped out on the lake i was a little bit distracted even though i'm not fishing until we get to the meat locker those got better if you can get over the chewiness they're uh mm. they're a six with butter maybe it's maybe six and a half if you're out here and you're tired and you're eating it, it, go, it goes higher you put up with the foot should but stir that corn cake around in this butter now you should i bet you if you took the foot out you could serve it to lots of different people and be like ah it's pretty good yeah it's not bad with the butter and the spices mm. so there you go that's a good experiment yep Leave no trace, leave no garbage. Actually, Jeremy's taking the garbage out. Uh, here. And, uh, 
we everything is accounted for better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what happened there? Did you slip? No, I went to lean my bag the one way on the rocks and it was like way front heavy and so it tipped the other way. <laughs> Into the lake. Oh, this pack does that. It always wants to. And then I had to step in over my boot to grab it. Well, there's nothing that can't get wet in there, oh, anyway, wow. probably. But I know you're very meticulous all about my, all that. All my water pack, all my <laughs> waterproof, water sensitive stuff is in there. So yeah, all that meticulousness, and then into the drink. Yeah, it's like poetic justice. Did you see it kind of floating there, though? <laughs> A little bit. Yeah. That's why people used to use these old canvas bags because they're like they just get dry. Well, after. they dry out, but they also you can kind of wax them, and then they're sort of like the old school waterproofing, right? Yeah, except for all the cracks in the top. Well, <clears throat> for canoeing, they had like actual roll-up cinch down ones that gotcha. were a little better. So how does that feel? Silly. <laughs> it's fun though. Like <laughs> these things happen. <laughs> Never. Everything happens perfectly. I actually have a spare pair of socks here, but I didn't want to tell you because you were going to filter juice through them. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have a spare pair of socks too. Oh, well. But I wasn't going to waste them on the yeah. choke chair juice. Not for drinking. Just want to put the fire out. So we're all packed up. Packed up and ready to go. Backlit by the sun. Um, just tried to uh, tidy things up the way they were when we arrived. So there was the bench and the, the little table, the fire grill. We added to the firewood pile. Burned up any of our scraps. Probably nobody wants to use this spatula that's been used for so many strange things and as a spoon. So I'm gonna put that fire out before we go. I didn't notice it until I was just doing our last round of making sure everything was uh, picked up. There was a lighter falling in behind that little table. I was there the whole time, which could have been way more expedient than using the fire steel, which is still a pretty convenient fire starter anyway. So we're all packed up. You all done your business in the woods? I did. One well, touchdown. Mini mini touchdown. Mini touchdown. That's good enough. Better than nothing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna do a couple more scoops of uh, water on the fire, and then um, 
we'll canoe over to the portage. So we're all tidied up. Uh, campsite is as good or better than when we found it because I also cleaned up some old like a sardine can and a soup can and something else. Anyway, so we're taking a little bit of garbage out with us as well. Oh, maybe this bag won't seal anymore. So I paddle over to the portage, head back to my new vehicle, and then we're going to the meat locker. All right. Here we go. Novacraft. Oh, canoe for weightlifters and young people. But it's indestructible and it carries like 1500 pounds or something stupid, right? So it's good for that. Stuff, 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 stuff. More stuff. We did it in two carries and we just met a really nice guy on the portage who's coming in with a kayak. Do some fishing for the day. So, hope he has really good luck. And uh, what a day it is. It was threatening rain this morning. It was really cloudy. And then now it's like you can hardly find a cloud in the sky. That means the temperature's way up too. Getting warm. Can't wait to... Uh, <laughs> get some clean drinking water and then catch those speckle trout. Well, this makes it easier. Yeah, that it's full gear or the camera and the, the camera right in. I'm going to get a big trot shot here. Don't worry, I won't zoom in for everybody on YouTube. It's just climbing across like a spider which is exactly how you want to get up to the front of the canoe. And then ideally, if you go to camp, you learn this, or like a training course, the other guy sits on the bow and that helps to keep it, or the stern, helps to keep it steady while somebody's crawling up. And then that person gets in. Gets in super close. I don't know if there's like a great way to have a camera right at your toes and get you in the frame, except your wide angle would probably do that. Oh yeah, skittering on all the rocks here. Nice day for water reflections. Side of the canoe too. So I'm gonna take us right by that hornet nest that's just barely above the water. You're gonna get me stung. How, how close do you want to get to it? Not close at all. Okay, this close? No. no. <laughs> They're swarming out here. If you want to get stung, 100%, if you go over there, you'll get stung. Where's your slingshot? <laughs> Look at that thing. Yeah. That's a bite waiting to happen. Yeah. Somebody's going to rip through here on a motorboat, <laughs> and it's just going to get waved. That'll be the end of them. Oh, stiff. Yeah. All right. Back at the car. Well, the good sign, or the good news, is that there's not much of a trail left here. So maybe not a lot of people have been coming into the meat locker. All right, here we are. Um, I'll give you a closer look in a minute. It doesn't really look like trout water. It's not deep, but uh, 
Got a couple of pockets. I don't even know if I recorded that last bit, but I I just um, dipped some spring water out of this spot. It's cold and refreshing. And we're just going to stay here long enough to make sure that uh, Chris starts getting some bites. And then we're going to move to the next spot. Boo. Oh, I'm overexposed. cold, eh? Yeah, it gave me brain freeze. Brain freeze. There, see, I wasn't lying. Chris is drinking, he's using the life straw, but he's on that other spring. There's a spring here. Anyway, there's a bunch of them, and they just feed this pond, and it feeds a cold water system. Okay, we need to switch up tackle. So, what we're going to do here is... We are going to take off the Cyclops, which has been um, really excellent for pike and bass. What is this? A MEPS 12 gram Cyclops. The other uh, killer bait that I was using, if you were watching um, the first episode for pike and bass, is uh, or was. This Maps Black Fury is the number four. This is like a go-to pike and bass lure for me. Um, you can tip it with a little bit of worm or minnow also, which is pretty handy. So, um, the Cyclops is off. <clears throat> and don't need a leader. Just have to pick, have to pick the right kind of small hook for here which I think is going to be this little guy here and where's my where's my loose egg okay. gotta wet that knot a little bit okay cut the tail off and should be Good to go. Uh, I'm gonna put a couple split shots on here. Oh, maybe a foot, a foot up, 18 inches up the line. So the meat locker was a bust. Um, whether that's because somebody fished it out or the environmental conditions changed, I have no idea. Um, but I do know there are no catchable trout in there right now, so we just have to decide as we wrap up our third day, are we going to try and hit yet another spot that may or may not pay out, or are we just going to cook our mushrooms and our leftover pike and call it a trip so we'll see I'm talking about plans well, we're gonna give this spot a try it's pretty isn't it pretty hard to get to Guess what I did? Filled my pocket with uh, riffle trout. Oh, 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 they're sticky. What do we got here? They're not big, but I grew up fishing these little guys and I love them. Flip the camera around. Look at it. Got back and there's a fire ready. You can see this guy in the light, maybe. One. Oh! 
two, oh, three. Oh, yeah. Four. They aren't big, but they're very pretty. And um, they're tasty no matter what size they are, so got the makings for a meal. Making a nice little pot of trout soup. Yeah. You want some guts with that? Mm. <laughs> no. Pan's good temperature. Yeah, Butter is in. Uh, so I guess the, the sad update is that the mushrooms took a tumble somewhere uh, along our journey today. So they traveled with us all the way from the uh, other campsite in the other episode, and we were going to cook them today, uh, but we can't because they they disappeared. But we're going to have some delicious trout in a very generous amount of butter which was one of my 10 items was a, a ration and I so I brought a pound of butter because it just makes the cooking so much easier thumbnail right there yeah yeah see how much effort I put into that one <laughs> big pan full of little trout probably too hot to eat <laughs> maybe I'm gonna try to hunt down the big one and take the back off of it go way up um, we're gonna eat some trout and then we are going to wrap up our day uh, getting close to the end of, of my outtime adventure. So what have I got here today? 7,053 steps. Holy smokes. And 2,300 calories burned. It's four o'clock. So I still have hours to go in my day, obviously, but, <laughs> uh, parenting duties call. So, uh, I was pretty happy to get out for three days, catch some bass, some pike, some mussels, some, a really nice haul of mushrooms, especially excited about that. Do some canoeing hang out with Chris, 10 items, plus or minus, one or two. And uh, and the, the big lesson from this trip was throw away that filter, get a new filter, Yeah. and then appreciate the items that you can bring. Yeah, definitely be more careful and you might swap some in and swap some out. Mm -hmm. But you know now what you need and yeah. then what you want. And, and just the appreciation of like how nice it is to have a separate coffee mug that's not your water bottle. <laughs> no, you're not cooking out of the right? thing, you're like, eating out of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just sharing the same pan as a plate all the time or making birch bark ones, so. Or doing three courses in the yeah. same pan. Yeah. And it, yeah. yeah, and eating out of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, there's certainly advantages to um, packing. Is that the one you were looking for? Uh, it doesn't, yeah, I think I. So you got yeah, the big one there. Yeah. Packing everything you want on that kind of a trip. Notice how these guys butterfly right open. Notice how they're too hot to eat. Still, mm -hmm. huh? Almost. Almost. Sometimes you can balance them on your fingertips and then you're okay. Nice thing about a trout. Hmm, besides how delicious they are. Is uh, the spine pulls out of them. If you don't, oh, yeah. if you with all meat, if you cook it in enough oil and and uh, and or don't dry it out. Mm -hmm. If you dry it out, the bones all stay in. There's a trick there. Mm -hmm. The bones. That little cheek meat. Mmm. Eyeball. Mmm. Mm. 
Another cheek. Hmm. Got the eyeball that time. Mm hmm. So I would say that the uh, creek trout is a small creature, but mighty in flavor. <clears throat> and I do really like the wadobo on everything that we've put it on. Mm -hmm. It uh, hits the spot. Yeah, I just ate half a trout in one bite. Cool. All right. We are going to enjoy these trout. Hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like and subscribe. Check out the wood appears, man. Subscribe or not. You don't care. No, I don't care. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.